me, but I'm still wasting my time just getting by As I'm drowning slowly
kind of disappointed. We didn't get any WWE reference on the show tonight, man. Oh. Oh, man. No CM Punk. No Triple H. No mention of the Fed. Man, oh, man, it resulted in a boring night, huh? Dynamite. Not as terrible as last week. But also nothing terribly exciting as we head into the Dynasty pay-per-view, which the last few weeks has felt off. But honestly, when it comes to pay-per-views, nobody delivers like Tony Khan. Will Ospreay continues the grind. He doesn't miss. In the main event against Claudio Castagnoli, great match. Anything Will Ospreay stamps his name to? Five stars. And AEW's got a Mercedes problem, man. I don't know what's going on with Mercedes. I think everybody's kind of over Mercedes already. She hasn't even stepped foot in the ring yet. I'll tell you who is stepping foot in the ring. The Chi-Town Smark is back. Tonight, he's drinking a Crown Royale on the rocks. Me, I'll take my old fashioned. So tonight we're drinking in my mother's basement. Jesse's upstairs in the OG venue. And when I get there, we want to know on this Wednesday night, what the fuck are you guys drinking? We'll see you over there. <laughs> Triple H been so successful? Why is Triple H running WWE better than Vince McMahon and Bruce Prichard on Monday and Friday night? Long term booking. Thank you so very much for joining us right here on Off The Script. This is your AEW Dynamite Post Show for April 17th, 2024. I am your host, JD, from New York. As always, coming to you live from the OTS venue. Thank you guys so very much for joining us on your Wednesday evenings. Wherever you may be, once again, joined after a two-week absence... The shot town smart is back, Jesse. What is going on? What's going on, man? How you feel? 
feel good. I feel good. Good to be back, man. Thank you, everybody. I, I appreciate it, man. Right, everybody's happy to see you, bro. Listen, uh, I got a problem, though, man. Last week, we did almost 9,000 live viewers, and we're live tonight, and you drove my audience away. I have a problem there. 9,000, huh? <laughs> I guess that that, that DDoS I sent work. <laughs> I was trying to help you out. But. Yeah, well, thanks. Uh, anyway, man, uh, it's good to have you back. Everybody missed you. I know you had uh, your reasons for being away. It's been very well documented. All the love and support. Uh, not only from the OTS family, but several in the community as well. Uh, how you feeling? How you doing? How's everything going? Talk to it's, us. It's good. It's good, man. I mean, I kind of I wanted to keep this light um, and upbeat, but I did go through all of the sad stuff um, on my channel. So if yeah. you missed it, I gave detailed updates um in in the form of live streams on my channel and they are there but uh tldr um my son is home and he he suffered from, he suffered from a a pretty severe case of double pneumonia um and it was looking rocky but so like extremely long story short um he did fight through he is at home he is recovering he's not a hundred percent um, that's just naturally going to take a few months, but he's on the right path. And I, I can't thank all of you guys enough. Um, like the IWC, you know, everyone out there in, um, in the industry, man, you know, who you are, I, I can't thank you enough. I'm not going to break any kayfabe here, but, um, I appreciate all of the well wishes, man. There you go. We're, uh, we're glad to have you back. AEW dynamite. In the books tonight from Indianapolis, uh, we're going to get into the discussion right away, right at the top here. Man, what was your, uh, I, I I think you watched the last couple weeks, correct? Have you watched the last couple weeks? I did. I did. I mean, uh, albeit from a hospital room, yeah. um, I did watch it. Um, it. It just can't, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I'm be dead honest man it kind of just in like basically in one ear not the other yeah. as, as far as um what i retained but i visually saw it and nothing stood out to me as a whole oh, crap yeah. man what the hell yeah um, it's a, it's completely different than what tony khan was producing at the beginning of march where you and i both both said that that was probably some of the best string of television that they've ever done yeah yeah, it, it it we we got one good week of that, and then we, you know I said I wasn't gonna hold it against them because you can't stay hot forever. Yeah, but now the the streak of bad show. I don't want to. I don't like saying bad shows, but the streak of less than less than the shows that we were getting before has continued, and it's ca caught up to the number of good shows. I think we're about three or four weeks of just mediocre to less shows. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know what went wrong. Actually, I do know what 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 went wrong. Uh, AEW's priorities uh, have shit the bed. They rather focus on other things that are beyond their control and worry about putting on good television in their own roster. But as far as tonight's show, it wasn't a bad show by any means. I mean, we had some great wrestling tonight as documented with Will Ospreay and Claudio in the main event. Uh, we had a very fun tag team match with the Young Bucks. And I, I enjoyed what Adam Copeland's doing, or I, ha I have been enjoying what Adam Copeland's doing. He's uh, he's doing his thing there as the TNT champion. But as far as your takeaway from tonight's show, Jesse, what was the one thing that you wanted to start off with here as far as what we saw tonight? Well, I, I mean, it wasn't the best thing on our show, but I think it's the most important thing on the show, and that's the main event of of claudio and will osprey because the main event we get last week was flat out pathetic man i'm sorry i i don't i don't know what that the one thing i do remember is watching dustin in the main event of dynamite well yeah well, well we all know why uh tony khan did that i mean again they're trying to ride the coattails of uh the, of the e i would it love to know why i mean why <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it was simply, I mean, I don't know what the fuck their, their mentality is, but they wanted, to me, the way I interpreted it uh, was that they wanted to ride the, wade, uh, ride the wave of one Rhodes winning the world championship, and then they wanted to basically tell the story of that Rhodes brother going for his championship with no story behind it. That was 
really, really, really bad. Yes. That you put that in the I mean, I don't think that kind of match should have been happening at all, but must I mean, even less, you put it in the main event. I mean, that tells any new onlookers that 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 Dustin is is your one of your top tier guys because you put him in the main event with yeah. the world champion. Yeah. I, it's that, it's that, just that. fucking unbelievable what the, the 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 decisions that they've been making. I mean, this is why we get so fucking animated. Like why? I mean, I that that I don't understand. But I mean, I'm sure sometime this week I'll be called a, a you know an AEW shill, you know, because I, I I support and I defend everything that they do. But I, I don't understand that at all. But a Will Osprey versus Claudio match in the main event, I'll take that any day of the week. Yeah, absolutely. My guy Billy with a Billy Bomb with a $100 Super Chat. Jesse, prayers to you and your family. It's great to see you back. Love you and JD Dynasty that we know TK is Mr. Pay-Per-View. Osprey versus Brian. Sign me the fuck up. ASAP Swerve can't wait to make history on Sunday. Love it. OTS for life. Billy, thank you so much, brother. Thank you for the love, the support, and the prayers towards Jesse as well. We love having you, as always, man. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, man, that was a little pathetic um, as far as Dustin being in the main event. And like you said, Will Ospreay should be the face of their company. That's the type of guy that should be uh, at or near the top of the program every single week. The match itself was fantastic tonight. I don't think Will Ospreay misses in anything that he does no. And I am genuinely excited. Uh, outside the swerve, possible title win, I'm genuinely excited, like little kid excited, to see those two men, Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson, wrestle on Sunday. And I truly think that it will be generational. I, I really do think that. It's going to be something that a lot of young fans look back on as, you know, the reason why they became professional wrestling fans. That's how fucking big this match is going to be on Sunday. Just a great pro wrestling match, and I'm here for it. The thing is, Jesse, with this Will Ospreay Brian Danielson feud, the one thing that pissed me off last week was that he mentioned Triple H and Paul Levesque first before he mentioned anything about Daniel Bryan. They, they, they had this, this mentality that I, I got to get all these cheap shots out, and he took a shot at Triple H for what Triple H said on the Pat McAfee show, which I did not agree with. I, I mean, granted, Triple H didn't mention any names. I think we could piece the puzzle together. He could have really been talking about anybody, but a lot of people aimed that comment at Will Ospreay. But as far as that's concerned, they put that over the, the story here with the Bryan match. There really hasn't been any dialogue in the ring one-on-one -on -one between Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson. I think that's what's really missing in this match. But I guess it doesn't really matter because they're going to put on a fucking 10-star match. No, no, there's, there's been no mention of it. Um, I don't think we've, um, we haven't had Brian here, really, have we? I mean, I mm -mm. think he's been here like a week. No. He has been here at all? No. Yeah, I mean, so as, I mean, it's kind of hard for him to carry on a few without him when the match is just built as a dream match, and that's how they're going to go into it. They're not going to go into it with story. Um, they're just going to book it as a dream match. Um, it might spiral into a, into a story after that and, and then spawn into a series of matches, but for right now, the build is dream match. And look, I would I would love to shit on that, but some sometimes in some rare cases that works. And this this could be one of those rare cases. Yeah, and there are there, there are there are cases Brian is probably going to slow down significantly as far as what he does in the ring this year. And this is probably one of the only opportunities that he may have to get Will Ospreay in the ring one on one, and he's going to take it. Yeah, yeah. So it, it and and. It, it may work in in this in this rare instance. I'm concerned that I, I'm trying to I'm trying to temper my expectations for this match, man. I mean, I I'm hoping that they over deliver like they should and they can, but I don't want to put too much pressure on them, you know, from me internally to them for them to produce a five six star match and then it's not, and then I'm sitting here like, well, that wasn't what I expected. Yeah, because you and felt I, the same way about Okada and Brian, and that's what happened. The exact same way, man. Because I went back, I went back and looked at that match again, you know, a, a, and I tried to just look at it objectively, and it was not a bad match. Yeah, it just was not the match that we were expecting, just because of the name value of who was in it and everything else. 
And that's kind of not fair to the guys, man. That's, that's not fair to those two guys. So on this one, I just want to wait and see what they do, especially since there's no build. I kind of look at this as like an exhibition match. Yeah. You know, I saw somebody in the chat saying who's heel, who's baby face. It's an exhibition. It doesn't really count for anything. There's no heel in face. It's just a dream match that people want to see. Um, is it just a one off or is it something they can then spin into a feud from this dream match? Because when you leave from this, now you got to give a story if you're going to give it back to us again. So um, I kind of want to see where they want to go with it. If they just want to label it as a dream match, you didn't think you ever get it, and now we're giving it to you, and then people complain because they don't get more, that would be a valid, you know, assessment by them. I would see them, you know, being angry at us as fans for wishing we could see this match, and then someone gives it to us, and then we complain that it's not enough. So I'll take the dream match. Thank you very much. I'll, you know, I'll gladly give you my money to see it because I would, I would love to see the match. But, um, if we're going to continue it, I would like some story behind it. Yeah, I mean, they did start out with some story. I know they had Shibata wrestle Brian on Collision, and then Shibata wrestled Osprey on Dynamite the following week. It was almost, I thought they were going into a direction of whatever Brian can do, Osprey can do better type of deal. And uh, there was uh, a vignette that Brian cut on Osprey, saying that Osprey could never walk a mile or, or, or walk in his shoes something along those lines, and then Osprey caught a couple of emphatic promos towards Brian, but they never met face-to-face, which I think was a missed opportunity. And like, like you said, two very good points. I don't think that AEW is going to turn this into a story and have a second match out of this. I think they move on to uh, new directions. Yeah. Or, or, or uh, they just end it, and then that's it. I don't think they're going to go into uh, a whole new story or develop the story from this might- one match into a second match. And like you said, also, um, the Oka- Okada match and Brian, everybody was excited about that. I'm two of the best in the entire world. And I feel like for you to, uh, for you and anybody to have those hesitations on, on that uh, going into Sunday, I think that's justified because, I mean, look what happened there. I mean, anything could happen, yeah. especially with the the rough and tough style that Osprey works, and then you know how Brian works. They're going to go yeah. fucking kill each other. So, you know, that that hesitation and that, uh, op, I guess, pessimistic attitude uh, yeah. is uh, is justified, certainly, by the fans. Yeah, I, I just want to I want to enjoy Brian while we have him because I got, I got a feeling we're going to be looking back on these days when he can't do this anymore or or chooses not to. And we're going to sit here and say, man, I wish we had more Brian. I'm going to take this as I can get it. We're getting Brian Danielson versus Will Ospreay. Yeah. I'm going to take that in a bubble and just consume it and be happy with it, man. Um, if we never get it again, we already got it once. So I'll take it. Um, if it if it turns into something more, then I would love some story behind it. But in a vacuum, face value, thank you. I'll take that match. You know, I'm not going to be too harsh on it. I do. I, I don't want to say I expect. I have the feeling they can over deliver. I don't see why they would not. But at the same time, I understand. We got to understand Brian's on the downside of his career. He's yeah. basically on this on this farewell tour of sorts here. And I just want to enjoy it, man. Yeah, I do think that they will. I will enjoy it. You will enjoy it. Everybody will enjoy it. I do think that they're going to use this match on Sunday as the vehicle to get Osprey away and out of the Don Callis family because I think at the end of that match, there will be a mutual respect for both guys to each other. And then as you saw tonight at the end of the Claudio and Will Ospreay match, the Don Callis family attacked uh, Claudio, and then the only one that did not join in on the attack was Will Ospreay, and then the Blackpool Combat Club was out there. So it looks like that they are building towards the Don Callis family versus Blackpool Combat Club uh, feud and I don't think Will Ospreay is going to want to be a part of that. And I think that Will Ospreay and Brian Dennison uh, will have this mutual respect for each other. I think the Blackpool Combat Club will welcome Will Ospreay as like an honorary member, not really in the group, but like, you know, they'll have his back. They'll have his respect. He'll have their respect. And that gets yeah. Will Ospreay away from the Don Callis family because that, that's been one, one of the glaring things that we have right now that Will Ospreay is in the Don Callis family. He's wrestled everybody in the Don Callis family. But how do we get him out completely of the Don Callis family? I think that's where we're going with this after Sunday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can all see it. Everybody knows that um, Will is only in the Don Callis family in name alone. Yeah. Um, he's a big baby face. You know, the Callis family is a bunch of a-holes, and 
we all know it. We're just trying to see how the official breakup happens, how it's done, everything like that. You know, it, it's it's a simple story. It makes sense because we all know where it's going. But um, again, the guy just got here, Will Ospreay. So um, they're going to get his feet wet before they, you know, get him into anything bigger and more complicated. This is simple. This is fine. This is, this is simple. Um, Don Callis will easily get Will Ospreay over as a, as a, as a super baby face. So um, I like where it's going so far. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to it on Sunday. I thought what they did was uh, simple and effective at the end of Dynamite. Uh, the other big thing that happened tonight, John Moxley, speaking of the Blackpool Combat Club, he showed up tonight with some new hardware. He is the new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, and it looks like he will be walking into Forbidden Door with that championship, which I think is a good decision there. As far as the creative is concerned, going into the Forbidden Door pay-per-view, which will be their third installment. What do you think of John Moxley holding the IWGP World Championship? Did you think anything of it when he won it this past weekend? Uh, that's, well, I think it's a big deal. You know, so for those who don't know, that that's 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 their big title. Yeah. That's that's the top of it. That's that's not a mid-card title. That that that's their the cream of the crop right there, man. So um I think it's an honor that that somehow TK got um, um, convinced them to let Moxie hold that title. Well, maybe it was the other way around. Maybe they wanted Moxie to hold it, you know, on American TV to help put the company over. Who knows? But um, Moxie's always been welcome in New Japan to do big time matches and spots and things like that. He's been welcoming all over the, in the Indies and everything else. But um, this is no shocker. Um, I think it's great. I think it's kind of weird that Okada is an AEW holding on the AEW title and John Moxley is an AEW holding on to New Japan. Uh, so, I got to call out a comment in the chat. AEW's got plenty of stories. You just refuse to see them. Uh, I see them. Jesse sees them. They got stories, but they're not particularly good. Plenty of stories. Plenty of stories. Is, they're is, just is a, not a, good. No, that's an oversimplification. They don't have plenty of stories. I just refuse to see them. I mean... Uh, that's what I do, bro. I, I get on here and I I, I, re, I just refuse to look at things, man. Yeah. I, that That's just what you, you, you got me. I just refuse to look at it. We just told you a, a, a story. We, we just gave you a story. It's like, it's like these people don't think Jesse and I watch the fucking shows. <laughs> Nobody said, said AEW doesn't have stories. We're pointing out the one segment so far. We only bought one segment into the show that didn't have a story. Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson. You sitting telling me you tell me it does have a story? Are you telling me that match does have a story? No, no, it does not. So let us get through the rest of the show, and then we'll point out the parts of the show that actually does have story. <laughs> oh my god, guys! You know comments like that. Whoever the fuck that was, uh, there are uh, big differences between a story and an angle. Story is like bloodline. Uh, an angle is what you saw tonight with the Blackpool Combat Club and the Don Callis family. It's not a story. It's not a story. It's not, it's not, it's not, that, it's not at that stage yet where I can call it, oh, man, you know, I, I've been sitting through this for eight weeks now. What a story this is. No, it, it literally yeah. started tonight. Come on. Yeah, the story's for eight minutes. Someone was giving a promo <laughs> backstage and it got interrupted and they made a match. That's your story. Oh, man. You you, hey, you AEW freakazoids, man. I swear to God, man. There's always something new every week, man. You're keeping us on, your to keeping us on our toes, man. I love it. Jeez. Fuck out of here. Um, yeah, Moxley. You know, the funny thing about Moxley is he is, I believe, the first person to win the... Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't, I don't know. I'm not Mr. Stat guy over here. Uh, the IWGP World Championship, the WWE Championship, and the AEW Championship. Oh, he may so be. That's, that's a that's an that's an that's a that's an easy uh pool to to narrow it down to. So first we gotta it'd be easier to find out first who was in who was world champion in New Japan. Who yeah, was Moxley? It? Jericho was Jericho champion over there. I don't know. Do I have to go to cage match? If Jericho was world champion over there, then he would be the first. I don't think Jericho held the IWGP title. Has he? Maybe he didn't. I don't Listen, know. I'm not some fucking historian. What do you think? I'm a fucking geek? I don't know. Chet? He is the Chet. first. Yeah, there you go. I got it right, man. I am a geek, I guess. Look at that. He's the first. Look at that. All right. Correct. That's, That's true. All right. That's amazing. I got one right, guys. Oh, man. That That's amazing, man. That, and that's listen, there's nobody. Listen, there's nobody better than Moxley for that, man. Moxley, Moxley's. No matter how much criticism he gets, Moxley is the guy. He is. Yeah. He's the face of the company. 
every company he's been in, yeah. everybody wants to book him at GCW. He's a champion everywhere he goes. Yeah. Everywhere he goes. I don't think, I don't, I don't think anyone will ever tout that. You know, I mean, I, I know, I know there's a certain company out there that likes to tout every last single. We are the first company to have consecutive sellouts on the East Coast on Thursdays in in odd years. You know, they'll they'll make up their own milestones. No one's ever gonna throw this one out there, though. No one's ever gonna talk about how Moxie's been world champion in all of the three of the major wrestling promotions in the world. Moxley's that guy. He is uh he is basically Tony Khan's ace. Oh my goodness. Thomas Franco with a 99 at 99 super chat. AJD, here's a bomb for the best duo in the IWC. And for Jesse, I'm glad to hear your son is feeling better as a father of eight little ones. Oh my goodness, Thomas. Oh Holy God, shit. Man. I always worry when one gets sick. God bless you and your family, and glad to have you back. You know what? Another round of applause. There. <laughs> Thomas Franco, eight children. Oh my Bruh. goodness, bruh. He Slater ain't got nothing on this guy. <laughs> oh man, definitely. I got three, and I'm 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 done, man. Anyway, uh, Thomas, thank you so much, brother. We're gonna get into the AW Dynamite uh, post. John Moxley cut a very uh, emphatic promo. Uh, part of it was uh, yet again another rah rah speech, because Tony Khan can't get enough of it. He's got a triple down, quadruple down on everything that's gone on the last few weeks. But there is no better person to cut a promo like that than John Moxley. Uh, we'll go over the Bucks and FTR situation. Okada and Pac, they should have a banger at the pay-per-view. They got into it tonight. And Hook and Chris Jericho in a segment that many people probably didn't care for, but I actually quite enjoyed it because Taz is now involved in the story of Jericho and Hook. So we'll get into that as well right here on the show. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining us on OTS. Uh, make sure you guys follow us on social media, at JD from NY206. That's on X, Instagram, TikTok, Cameo. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications. Go follow Jesse on X as well. He's never on there. And when he is, he immediately wants to close the fucking app and delete the app off his phone. Yep. That's Shy town I'll, Smart. I'll reinstall it when I got to post something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe uh, maybe Tony Khan should uh, take your, uh, your uh, aspect of how to handle social media. I try to watch the, only the half of the screen where I write, so I don't see anything. God, so I'm just man. like, what a and close, close. What a fucking cesspool, man. Oh my goodness. One day I'm a fucking Triple H mark. The next day I'm a fucking Tony Khan mark. Make up your fucking minds, man. You guys are flip flopping more than fucking Burger King, man. Get back to work. I'll take a fucking side of fries through a barbecue sauce. You fucking geek. Man. Anyway. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications. Go check out all the content on the channel. We were live last night solo. I was a Tuesday night Titan. Not Titans. My co-host left me. Still love Drew. We got revolving guest hosts the next couple weeks. Sir Wilkins from the Jobber Tears podcast. My good friend Ango the following week. And then, oh, man. I tell you what, man. Jesse knows who the new co-host is. Jesse knows who it is, man. I, d d listen, man. I know you're not going to say nothing, but how did you feel when you saw the graphic of the new co-host? I marked out, man. Oh my goodness, man. I'm 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 not gonna lie. That that's that's a shoot. I was in the kitchen. I was standing there next to my wife, and then um, I told her the news about TNT. And then she was like, you know, you know, what the heck? And then I showed her the replacement. She said, oh, my God. <laughs> I, I know. Oh, my goodness, man. Tuesday Night Titans, man. It's going to have a whole new fucking name on Tuesday nights, man. Nobody. I swear to God, man, this podcast may fucking burn buildings down. That's how big this shit's going to be. It's <laughs> oh, man, look. Hi. Hi. Oh, it's man. LJ is up past his bedtime just to say... 
Hello and thank you. Hi. You didn't say hello or or thank. Thank you. <laughs> you gotta go to bed, buddy. Bye bye. Say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey. okay. All right. He's good. some wholesome content here, really. All, All right. right. Oh man, it's a PG show now. There you go, man. Hi. Uh so. <laughs> So, yes, Jesse knows who the new co-host is. Uh, the new co-host will be unveiled the next day after Ango goes live with me, man. So, we're going to do our thing, and TNT will live on, and Tuesday Night Titans, I swear to God, man, it's going to have a whole new different name, uh, or a whole new take on Tuesday nights, man. So, thank you guys for the support. Great show last night. We went over a lot of news. Go check all that stuff out. And make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. Please, let's try to get to 1,000 likes, and the Super Chats are open. Billy and Thomas, thank you guys for the support, and everybody else that has donated to the show tonight here on Off the Script. We'll get... I got to spoil it. LJ is the co-host. Yes. That's why he showed up on camera tonight. That's why he showed up now. You guys get the sneak peek. There you go. Anyway, guys, let's get into the top of the show. John Moxley started the show out. Wanted to show off that new hardware with the IWGP World Championship. And he's in the ring. And he's talking about winning one of his first titles near or at the Salvation Army Community Center right here in Indianapolis. He said people were telling him what he can and can't do. He said his message now is the same as back then. Kiss my ass and watch me. He said, watch me climb mountain after mountain after mountain. And when he talked about the IWGP title, fans chanted, you deserve it. He didn't acknowledge it, but in the back of his mind, he probably said, yeah, motherfucker, I deserve it. He says he's been chasing it for five years with pain and heartache and thousands of miles back and forth. He said, when your back is against the wall, how deep are you willing to go to prove the doubt is wrong? That is what AEW is all about. And a big AEW chant broke out in Indianapolis. Uh, so it was definitely a more tame rah-rah, you know, but when a message like that, which should have come from Moxley in the first place, when a message like that comes from John Moxley, I know it's as genuine as genuine can be, so I didn't really mind it because he actually tied it into what he felt joining AEW. He has been through the trenches in AEW He's grinded in AEW and for AEW elsewhere all over the world on the indies in Japan. So Moxley knows what it is. And Jesse, when he mentioned, you know, what he mentioned in this promo, coming from him, I have absolutely no problem with him saying what he said tonight about the company. I I didn't either, man. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just a me thing, but I would have rolled MJF out there to give this speech that Copeland gave. Yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned that in your absence. Uh, I don't know if it was last week or the week before. I did mention MJF as being one of the only few people in that company to cut that promo for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely would. I, I know it would have taken away from his return pop because he's not ready to come back right now. But I just felt like this was a moment in time where his presence um, would have been greatly appreciated and needed. And he could have stepped right back out and finished his hiatus. But that's here nor there. Um, I feel like anybody with enough passion in their and and if they if they have that much passion about AEW, I don't have a problem with them going out and portraying it. Um, it's just about how it's received, man. That, that's that's all it is. I mean, who are we to say, oh, Moxley should be doing it, you know? And MJF should be doing it, but this guy shouldn't be doing it. We think we'll tell you who should be doing it. The guy came out and said he asked for this time and he was granted it. I'll take him at face value that he wanted to go out there and say it. So I'll listen to what he's got to say. Um, Moxley has been here longer. He does represent um, the majority of how most people probably feel in the locker room and everything like that. But it doesn't, to me, it doesn't mitigate anything that Copeland had to say. Um, but I would have taken. Mox's words a little bit stronger than, than Copeland's just because of the longevity that he's had here. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I, I uttered the same sentiment as well uh, when Copeland cut the promo. And, and, you know, Tony Khan went back on everything that Copeland said because Copeland mentioned that there's so much negativity in the 
realm of pro wrestling. There's a lot of negativity aimed at the company for unjust reasons. And then Tony Khan goes on these promos or, or the, these interviews and, and conducts these, these sit-downs, and, and he's just nothing but negative. He, like, riles up the tribalism when you just sent one of your biggest guys out there who, who knows a thing or two about how to handle business, and, and then you just make him look like a fool. So I had a problem because everything that Culpin was out there saying, whether he was sent out there or whether he did it on his own, he just looks like an idiot. And, and I don't know why you want to treat him that way or make him look like that. So I, that's, I had a problem with a lot of what they did. I, I just felt like they should have ignored it. Moxley here was at least low-key. It was like under the radar. It wasn't the whole point of the promo. The whole point of the promo was to basically call out the Don Callis family and then parade around with the new championship because he fucking deserves it. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen any of, of of TK's interviews. I've I've been out of the loop that long. I haven't even read I hadn't even read or picked up any any um outlets that covered it, to be honest with you. So I have no idea what he has been saying about it. But I can imagine what kind of trip he's on, dude. I mean, from from the moment that he said that he tried reaching out to WWE to play nicely and play and to play fairly with them a while back. And they pretty much slapped their hand away. I, I kind of knew that there was never going to be any kind of even ground with these people. And it just, I, I think after the Punk interview, it just spun out of control and got ugly. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it did. There was, there, there was no, there was no back and forth. The interview started the back and forth and the back and forth continues. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean if, uh, I think everybody is in an understanding that if Punk didn't go on Ariel Hawani's show, none of this would have even been a discussion. None of this would have happened. It none of it. It wouldn't. It, it, it really wouldn't. They were, on during, they, they were on during WrestleMania week. Um, they were promoting the biggest show of the year, you know, probably of all time. Um, I don't see a reason to even throw shade or hints or anything about another company, to be honest with you. But that's just a me thing. They're at liberty to do whatever they want. You know, and I take the same stance with AEW, who, how they chose to retort. You know, I'm I'm never the one to say, "Hey, um, it's messed up what they did to you," but um, you should just drop it and let it go, and you should be the bigger man. Yeah, that would be great, and that would be admirable, but I wouldn't hold someone to it because if it happened to me, I couldn't sit there and promise you that I'd be sit there and not say anything or not do anything. Well, you should do it in the interview because they did it in the interview. Well, I mean, that's like saying, well, he slapped you, so you shouldn't punch him. I mean, it's, it's already started. Well, and, and, and once it's already started, the bullshit comes out. Now it starts to get fucking petty. Now it gets petty and childish, and that's how we got to where we are. It started getting petty and fucking childish, man. Yeah, we'll get into it because the Young, the young Buck situation with FTR is, is honestly being built out of, you know, the punk interview leading into the footage being leaked and shown on Dynamite last week, and now they're making a story into it. It's like, Really? I mean, I think I, I, I perfectly documented it, not only last week, but this week on TNT last night. I mean, you, you, they, think, they think the audience is fucking stupid, and then the people that actually fucking wave the flag of AEW, they don't even give a shit that their intelligence is being insulted. And then AEW, they, all they do is triple down. You know, it, it's like, all right, they're making a fucking mistake. Call it out. And then AEW thinks that everything that they do is right and the way to go, like, m come on, man. I, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll get into it, but Moxley, you know, it wasn't as a rah-rah speech like Copeland or uh, whatever else was stated on social media. Very low-key. He said there are some very talented individuals in the Don Callis family. Transitioned into talking about them, but Callis is a creep, he says. He says he has no time for him and his men bullying, and they are all buying his lies. He says they put a hit out. On his friend Brian Danielson. He said, if you put a target on Danielson, you might as well put one on him. He invited them to come find him because he'll be right there all night. He says he doesn't think they'll come at him, so he challenged Powerhouse Hobbs to a match next week on Dynamite in Jacksonville. He says they'll find out just how out of his depth he is when he steps in the ring with him. He says he's not going to make it quick or easy for him. He said Hobbs will learn that Callus is feeding him lies. So no one can touch him, and there is only one, and there will be only one, John Moxley. So there you go. 
you know, it was at one point or another, I thought the Blackpool Combat Club were turning heel. And now, you know, I mean, it's like their baby face again. This was basically the preface of, of a baby face uh, direction here. Because the Don Callis, I mean, Don Callis is a fucking mega heel. So I, the last time I saw the Blackpool Combat Club, I, I would assume or I assume they would they would be heel. And now they're going baby face. If you really think about it, think, about the, Black, think, think about the Blackpool Combat Club as a whole, since their inception, everything they've done in this totality, it, they've pretty much been tweeners the whole damn time, have they not? Mm-hmm. One week, they would they, they have their tendencies where they may lean towards heel or would lean to. I mean, they'll come out and do some shit where they'll jump a guy and beat the crap out of him, and then they're pretty much heels that week. And then there'll be a week where they come out and show force to come, you know, save somebody blackpool comeback club coming in and then their baby faces i don't think they've ever really established themselves as complete heel or baby face they've pretty much told the line the entire time and i I, i've picked up on that so it's it there's no definitive their heels or faces they may do some heel shit one week but i promise you a week or two later they're being cheered for something that they did yeah they are, they are, they are the epitome of what tweeners are. All of them have the ability to play that role. Claudio at the same same way. He doesn't talk a lot, but Claudio will play heel or face in a match, you know, from week to week. I mean, they are they are very good at that. Them, um, the House of Black were kind of like that for a little bit too, but they've definitely been straying along the the, the heel side as of late. Yeah, I, I, you know, the Blackpool Combat Club doesn't do anything where I genuinely want to sit as a fan and boo them. Yeah, exactly. Ever. ever. I mean, I, th- there's no reason for anybody to want to boo Brian Danson or, or Claudio or John Moxley. None of them. And and Brian has has been a dick from time to time, dude. And when he's he actually was- when he's actually played a heel, he's been fucking great. Yeah. And even even then, I didn't want to hate him. I'm like, this guy's fucking great. I could hate this guy. The the, the planet's champion. I don't know what yeah. his fucking uh, what his uh, ecosystem belt, whatever the fuck it that was. was his, so his hemp belt. So good. That was so good. He had a he had a belt that was made of him and organic materials. Well, oh, what a prick, dude! <laughs> I, I hope he has a commemorative ty- a copy of that title and on his mantle because he deserves it. Uh, I'm sure he does. But the thing with this Moxley promo is, if there's anybody that cut this promo, Moxley is the face. He's the ace. He's the heart and soul of this company. Only a select few men. MJF is one of them. Uh, Moxley is the other. Uh, to cut this type of promo, and uh, this uh, nailed it. He nailed this promo. Now, as far as the IWGP Championship, I did uh, kind of utter this out loud tonight. It's like, oh, man, another fucking title that's not AEW's on the show. But if there is a championship on the show that's not an AEW title, then it should be this one because of the, the uh, of the sheer importance that this title holds in the industry. So if there's yeah. going to be a title that you want to showcase that's not your title, this is it. Everything else, I don't give a fuck about. Yes, yeah, th- this is definitely one that gets a pass for flaunting it on your TV. I mean, that that's that's that that's that's a pretty distinct a distinctive title to carry around. Yeah, um, and it it makes Moxley look better. It makes the company look better. Everyone knows how how. Uh, New Japan, even if you don't know anything about New Japan, you know they are more wrestling oriented. You know, they are all about um, work rate and everything like that. And Moxie holding their top title just goes to show how flexible and, and that he can be in any company. You know, he can do work rate in, in New Japan. He can do brawler style in GCW. He can come over here and tell big storylines. Moxie can do it all, man. Yeah. I'm very curious to see who he defends that title against at Forbidden Door. A lot of people have been saying it's going to be Shota Umino, uh, his protege. Uh, I don't know if that will happen at Forbidden Door, but we will see. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see him walk in to uh, the UBS arena where Forbidden Door will be right here on Long Island. I'm only uh, a hop, skip, and a jump away from that. So uh, we will see what happens there. Very interesting stuff. Moving on. Hey, we may have to. Do we, do we need to? Hooli, do we need to slow down the chat or to members only or something? There seems to be a problem going on. Yeah, what, what's what's going on in the chat? I'm not even paying attention. I got the chat closed. Hooligram, do we do we need do we need members only in chat? He's he's trying to corral it, but people are giving him a hard time. I don't know. I don't know what you guys are arguing over. 
You're well, arguing over who the fucking guest host is? Jesus Christ. Christ. My God, what is there to argue about? Throw your guesses out and shit? then drop it. <laughs> you don't know. God, it, man. Uli says it's all good. All right. All right. All right. Moving on. Um, Mercedes Monet. Oh, man. We might have gotten a little insight as to why this woman has not wrestled yet on I, AEW I've, television. I've said it. I've said it. Dude. There's a reason why she has not wrestled, man. Yeah, but do we believe the reason? I don't know what the reason is, but I know there's a goddamn reason why. We're still fucking trying to find out the reason why she didn't wrestle Bianca Belair at SummerSlam and why Belair wrestled Becky and lost in 16 seconds. Remember that? Yeah. We never got um, an explanation for that either. We're not going to get an explanation for this. There's no way he signed this, this woman to this big deal to be in the company, and she's spending week after week after week not wrestling. She's not, she's not ready to go. I don't know. But she did cut a promo. I would, I will say that this has been her best promo so far. She said last week somebody attacked her in the dark. It went viral on social media because of uh, her moaning. Everybody loved uh, Mercedes moaning as she laid there on the floor, attacked in the night. I heard nothing about that. It's amazing what you're not privy to when you don't get on. So I love it. I love it. Guys, get your mind out of the gutter, okay? Get your mind out of the gutter. She said, as the CEO, she always gets right back up. Oh, I'm, I'm fucking push, pushing the wrong button here. Where's my fuck? Where are you guys? <laughs> there you are. <laughs> KB Brown with a $100 bomb. It's good to see you back, Jesse. Hoping all is great with you and your family. JD, been a fan of yours since the night. Roman Reigns. Won the 2015 Royal Rumble. Oh, man, Ugh. what a shit show that was, huh? Philly. Thank you all for what you do, and God bless. KB, thank you, brother. It's been a long time, man. We are going on 10 years with you watching the show, man. That's a fucking long time. A decade, man. Thank you very much. Uh, is my mind in the gutter, Skinner? I don't know. I watched the clip a couple of times, man, so uh, my mind is probably right there along with you guys. By the way, you know no one, you know nobody attacked her but Jamie Hayter or Britt Baker, right? Probably. Okay. I mean, it's way too obvious that it's Julia Hart, man, right? Yeah. There's nobody. Well, Willow. It's, it's either Jamie Hayter or Britt Baker. There is no one else. You know, Maybe. you know, you know, Britt's been a little active, man. It's just random tweets, man, showing her uh in uh, some clips doing uh, a little sling blade or, or a super kick. I mean, what's going on there, Brett? I, 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 I mean, what, what's uh, what's going on there? Bro. She she's trying chilling to tell us on, something that uh, is right in front of our face? She's chilling on her couch, man. This will be the second time you guys have, uh, have fantasy booked her into storylines going on on TV. Man. You chilling. guys are crazy, man. Mercedes Monet. <laughs> Oh, man. Listen, man. I love Mercedes, man. How could you hate on Mercedes? Yeah, I don't know. What's, I, 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 think, I think her not wrestling is adding to this uh, total package of Monet not delivering right about now. They, they're, they're, they're getting ready to book her into, you know, pay-per-view matches and shit like this. And she hasn't even had a match yet. And yeah, man, I don't, I don't know. All right, listen, she's the CEO. I wish they'd take that fucking chant out of her theme. I mean, Jesus yeah, that's, that's, Christ. that's god awful. That needs to come out. You know, I that. thought that, I thought about it when she came out to um, kind of uh, interfere at the end of that match, that tag team match. It's like, oh, man, what, a, what an obnoxious way to fucking make an introduction there for a post match yeah. attack. Like, CEO, CEO, like, come on, that's man. Can, so, can they have a version so where that's not included? I'm, I don't mind that if she's coming out to wrestle, but yeah. for a fucking post match attack, I mean, can we get a version that doesn't have that? I, Seriously? Look, I, I get it. You planted the seed as to what you wanted everyone to chant when she comes out when she yeah. made her debut. Great. Take it out now. There, there is no need for that chant to be. That's like that's like a pipe. It's just a piped in chant, basically. Yeah. We do not need. Oh, uh, yeah. It, or Chris Statlander. It's either Britt Baker, Jamie Hader, or Chris Statlander. Anyway, she says she always gets right back up. She said she can't wait to pay back that bitch who attacked her last week. She said she didn't. 
or she didn't picture Julia Hart to be such a coward, but maybe it was someone who wanted her to think it was Julia. She said maybe it's someone who doesn't want to face her at double or nothing when she's all the way healthy. She said she's looking forward to the mixed tag later. She said there's a price to pay when you mess with Mercedes Monet. Well, the money puns won't stop, will they? No, I actually like that. It's not bad. There's um, plenty of them. Listen, Mercedes says that she is not fully healed. She's not fully healthy is what she said tonight. Duh. So I, I don't really understand, and I get. It, it, so, it sounds like and it looks like Tony basically used her to sell out big business or to sell as much tickets to Boston at big business by using Mercedes. Um, but it was on that night. She actually got physical. She did a money maker, which is her finishing move. I mean, it's very impactful. Uh, it's uh, a full body move. You know, she's not, uh, it's not some weak, flimsy maneuver. So she did take a bump and she was getting a little physical there with Julia and Sky Blue. So it's like, all right, she's, she's medically cleared. I think she even said she's ready to be back in that promo. And now all of a sudden, five weeks later, promo after promo after promo, same shit, same shit, same shit. Why are they now claiming that she's not fully healthy? Meanwhile, she's already said that she's wrestling at double or nothing. There's a lot going wrong here. Wrestling at double or nothing for a championship, and she's not wrestling a single match to put herself in the rankings for said championship. She's just going to get a championship match because she asked for it. Yeah. I mean, how, how, how does any of this, TK, make any sense whatsoever? I don't, I don't get it. No. Here's our new ranking system. Here's Mercedes Monet. She gets a title shot at double or nothing. First match. How? Why? This is what I talk about by AEW, uh, you know, looking at their fans and insulting their intelligence, and then they don't realize that they're doing wrong. Yeah, but um, I'm the bad, Jesse's the bad guy. I'm the bad guy for calling this fucking lazy bullshit out. And they won't even acknowledge it. They just keep making the same mistakes. Deanna Perrazzo debuted in the ring right away. Yeah. Right away. We're still waiting for Mercedes to, to, to hear a bell. We should not be talking about her being in any kind of match at a pay-per-view. We will let, I mean, she has not done anything, bro. She has not put a headlock on a jobber. She hasn't done anything, and you get her schedule for a pay, bro. That's that's a that's that's the ironic part is, and and uh, uh, Winston, I want to give him credit for the ironic part is, this is what she complained about with Charlotte. Very true. This is what she complained about with Charlotte. Very that true. Very same treatment. How many of these fucking uh, AEW shill podcasts out there are going to mention that one? Zero. Nope. Zero. Not one of them. No, but we're the bad guys, though. Get to the bomb. We got another bomb. Yep. You guys are crazy, man. David M. with another $100 Super Chat hasn't even wrestled yet and has already been exposed, in my opinion. She seems to just repeat the same cliche lines every promo. No emotion, no intensity, in my opinion. She's damaged her value in the market. It has not been a good investment so far for AEW. And David M., thank you, number one. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for being here. And yes, David is correct. I was going to get to that because I have it written here. There seems to be a disconnect with Mercedes. And Jesse and I, I love Mercedes. She's one of my favorites in the entire women's realm of pro wrestling, if not my favorite. There seems to be a disconnect with her coming on in, Jesse. And tell me if I, I'm making sense here. She seems to be cutting a very WWE-like or WWE-style promo in an environment in AEW where... They don't really sound that scripted. Everything kind of sounds a little bit more, a little bit more normal, a little bit more human. Uh, bullet points instead of re reciting scripts. It sounds like Mercedes is still cutting that WWE like promo. It's not really translating well onto AEW television. Yeah, I 100% agree. But that it 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 does feel 
like someone wrote it for. It sounds like she is reading something off that she just remembered. Yeah. Um, no one is really connecting with the gimmick just yet, but I do want to put the brakes on everyone who's saying it's a failure. You know, it was a, it was a waste. It was a bad investment. It was a flop. I want to remind everyone that she just got here 15 minutes ago. I mean, the, the, the messed up parts about what they're doing with her is that she hasn't even had a wrestling match yet. No. But the messed up part of, about what you guys are saying about her is she hasn't even had a wrestling match yet. You guys need to relax. Relax. I mean, who knows? I mean, Tony Storm, I made this point before, Tony Storm came in and she sucked. She was the same old Tony Storm. It was boring. No one gave a crap about it. And they made some adjustments. And now Tony Storm is lighting the world on fire. My TV is better when Tony Storm is on it. I think the same adjustments can be made at some point for Mercedes. You got to give her some time. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I, everybody's saying that she's a failure. Like Jesse said, she hasn't wrestled a match yet. And, and to be honest with you, I, I, don't, I don't usually do this. This is Jesse, uh, Jesse Spiel. I, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Maybe, maybe she's not really injured. And she's using it to facilitate a heel turn. Maybe. Maybe. You know, I don't think, I mean, that wouldn't help her. No, that wouldn't help. I, I mean, I don't know why you would just leave money on the table without her wrestling. I mean, yeah, no. advertising her to wrestle her first match on Dynamite. I mean, that's, that's a big fucking deal, right? Yeah. But um, I will say, as far as the heel discussion is concerned, I do think, because she did show some heel tendencies tonight, which we'll get into. I do think that she just comes off so much more natural as a heel than a baby face. I do not like, and I said this about her in WWE as well. She is not a good baby face. She's not. No, no, I, I never, I never liked her in in any, in any iteration of her as a baby face at all. So we went from that to Adam Copeland. This was supposed to be a mixed tag team match with Copeland and Willow Nightingale against Brody King and Julia Hart. So they went through Copeland's entrance. And then as Willow's music played, she was down in the back being checked on by Statlander and Soakley Hathaway. Willow was in pain, and she said she'd be fine. So the lights went out in the arena. Brody King then attacked Copeland from behind when the lights came back on. Julia Hart was waving and smiling from the stage, kind of, uh, I guess, depicting that Julia attacked Willow in the back. But Brody beat up Copeland at ringside, and the medical team was checking on Willow at the same time. The bell did not ring but Copeland told Aubrey Edwards to ring the bell, and this was basically uh, a handicap match for Adam Copeland against Brody King and Julia Hart, or if you want to just say it was a one-on-one -on -one match because Julia Hart couldn't tag in without a female on the other end. It was Adam Copeland versus Brody King for the majority of this uh, on Dynamite to open here. So we go into the match, which wasn't bad, and I think Copeland's been doing some great work as of late with the TNT Championship so we got a commercial break, and he is getting beat up by Brody. When we come back, Copeland fought out of the corner, hit a top rope clothesline. Both guys got up, and they are throwing bombs at each other. Copeland's staggering. He gets King to the corner. Big clotheslines and some big boots. He connects with the Impaler DDT. King kicked out. Copeland followed with a blockbuster out of the corner, which did not look good because it looked like Brody just came right down on top of his face. So he hits the blockbuster. He went for the spear, but King turns him inside out with a big King Kong lariat. Brody then missed the cannonball, and all of a sudden Willow stormed to the ring, which is a typical baby face spot that they do here, and they did it here with Willow. So Stokely's out there. Statlander's out there cheering her on. Nightingale gets onto the apron, makes the tag, and jumps off the top rope and hits a crossbody onto Brody. So Julia Hart bailed. King was flattened by a Copeland spear and a cannonball in the corner by Nightingale. Julia appeared and all of a sudden decked Nightingale with a chain wrapped around her fist. Referee didn't see it. Copeland tackled King to the floor. Julia applied Heartless on an unconscious Willow. And that was basically the win for the House of Black. Uh, I did like this. I thought the majority of this was good. Nice little baby face spot there for Willow to get attacked and then come on out and try to save the day, but uh, it was too much for Willow here as she lost. After the match, Mercedes stormed to the ring with a steel chair as Julia Hart quickly ran away with Brody. 
Monet looked at the chair, and back in the ring, she was about to nail Nightingale with the chair before looking at Adam Copeland, and she said, you know what? I respect Adam Copeland too much. She threw the chair away. So Monet and Copeland ended up shaking hands before she stared down at Nightingale once again because there is a tease that if Willow beats Julie at the pay-per-view for the TBS title, we will get a rematch for Willow and Mercedes, uh, basically a year after she was injured. So they are teasing that. I thought this was uh, simplistic, Jesse, but quite effective here. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was It was pretty much to the point. Um, Julia's not losing that title. Willow's going to lose because Chris Statlander is going to complete her heel turn. Um, that is that is definitely the, the way they're going to go. They're going to go um, with Chris Statlander versus... Um, um, Willow Nightingale. Um, she attacked her in the dark. It's 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 amazing how they would always be together, but Willow gets attacked. When whenever a tag team, guys, this is pro wrestling one on one. Whenever a tag team, one member is attacked and the other one wasn't there for it, that's split steel, bro. That's a heel turn on the way. There's yeah. there is nothing else. There is nothing else to the. Why, otherwise, why wasn't Statlander attacked? Why would they, why wouldn't they just have them both attacked in that scene? So if Statlander attack Willow, is she going to side with Mercedes? That's a good question. Um, I, it, you know what, man? Would I do that? No. I think Statlander with Stokely is the best way to roll with Statlander. You put her with someone else like Mercedes, and she can get overshadowed. You know, yeah. and that's not it, that's not where you really want Statlander. I think she should turn on Nightingale for her own reasons, and Mercedes just takes advantage of it. So we'll see what happens there, but uh, Mercedes needs to get in the ring. Yes, I think that's that's the uh, the gist of uh, of everything here. She she needs to get in the ring and wrestle. Is she injured? I don't want to sit here and tell you she's not injured because she documented how serious the injury was and said the doctors told her she may never wrestle again. That's how bad the injury was. But we've seen her training in the ring. She wouldn't have posted training videos on social media. She did some uh, impactful moves on her debut night at Big Business, and then all of a sudden she's not healthy to wrestle. I don't know what to believe. Uh, And Mercedes is very secretive about what she does, and she doesn't really let everybody in to know what exactly she's doing. So I think it's a mistake that this woman has been debuted already for five weeks or so and is still not have wrestled a single match. I mean, I I just don't understand. It's it's very silly to me. It really is. There is, I don't know why... The only logical reason I can come up with, and if it's wrong, if it if it's a wrong um, assumption, then it's just the vibe that they put out. You signed her, you put her on TV, and she's not wrestling. That tells me that she can't wrestle because everyone else that you sign and then you put them in the ring as soon as possible, maybe like the following week. You know, Will Ospreay, Diana Perrazzo. You know, they they came in and right away they were in the ring. But Mercedes has to wait weeks upon weeks upon weeks, and you want to wait until you get her to a pay per view and then put her in a title match. That doesn't sound suspicious at all. A literal game changer that you're not changing the game with. Whose fault is that? Yeah. Creative Tony Khan or Mercedes? The answer is very easy. It's get her very in the sus. ring. Get her in the ring. Renee Paquette sat down with Samoa Joe. He said that he once saw Swerve as a worthy contender, but now he is more of a nuisance. He keeps getting back, so he sees him as a punching punching bag. Renee asked what he thought of Swerve holding his championship last week. He said he was worried the belt might need to be disinfected. You know where Nana has been? He said Swerve is a bit of a choke artist. He said history will repeat itself. He said at Dynasty, he will be the one choking him out. Instead, Joe calling Swerve a choke artist when it comes to big matches and then vowing to choke him out was a nice little touch there, man. You know? <laughs> gotta love Joe, bro. <laughs> Who better than Joe? Who better? Nobody. Gotta love, gotta love Joe. Uh, Ruby Soho's pregnant? I don't know. Is this an angle? I don't know. All right. I would not be surprised. AEW, uh, hang another one on the fucking, uh, on, on the board for AEW and desperation for ratings. 
But wait, are they okay? So I didn't even know they, they were an we, actual couple. Is that, are, are they like you sleuths in the chat, man? I don't follow this shit like you do, man. I don't give a fuck with these yeah. people doing their personal lives. Are they a real couple? She might legit be pregnant with whoever her real boyfriend is. Okay? Maybe, you know that I would I, believe. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if they're in an actual couple or not, and they just were gonna roll it into TV. Fuck, they got me nothing. They got me uh, not doing anything on TV. I want to start a family. Go ahead, whatever. Yeah. Either way. It, it it seems to be a legit shoot that she is pregnant. Whether or not it's a, you know a, a, a TV romance, we don't know. But congratulations to Ruby Soho. But they're not a couple, right? I don't know. I don't know. Are they going to turn her pregnancy into an angle now? I would. Why not? If she's I legit guess, pregnant I, and she's I, I, I if so. she's already in an, on an end screen couple role or whatever, just roll it in. All right. Whatever. There you go. Uh, we got a promo airing with Matt and Nicholas Jackson, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson, and Kazuchika Okada talking about facing FTR at Dynasty in a ladder match. They interrupted the video package and said that they had to cut time off the show, and their segment was the one that they cut. Matt told FTR that they had to dump the segment, but they'll post it on social media. Nick said their six-man tag team match is a warm-up for Dynasty, where they'll become the first ever three-time AEW Tag Team Champions Okada then said, Pac won't make it to Dynasty. Pac, you're a dead man, says Okada. There's just something I love about Okada speaking English in his tone, man. It's great. It's like whatever he says is the sentence he worked on. <laughs> I love it. He's so He's good, man. a whole week working on that sentence, and I, I love it. That, that, that's somebody that's trying. I love it. Well, you guys are saying I have to go Google it on see, uh, to see who, uh, if Angela Parker is dating Ruby Soho, really? That's what we get you guys for. This, did you guys look it up? Anyway. Someone said they are. I don't know if they are or they aren't. Uh, he told Tony Khan to play their music. And we see Tony Khan sitting at the gorilla position or the Brody position, whatever they call that position. His life was not threatened in this moment. Oh, God. You want them to stop bringing up Panther. <laughs> You know, you led this podcast <laughs> off talking about punk. You realize that? Oh, did I really? Yes, you did. The first thing Who, out of me? your mouth was punk. Yes, you. Oh, in the car, right? Oh, yeah. I mentioned punk in the car on the way here, yeah. man. That's not part of the show, man. It's just me driving to the venue. How is that not irony? AEW won't stop talking about WWE. You won't stop talking about WWE. Hey, listen, man. I'm missing uh, 7,000 viewers. I need more punk on AEW television, man. Oh, man. Anyway, uh, we got this six-man tag team match, and uh, I guess we'll uh, we'll get into this. This was fun. I thought this was a fun match. Lots going on here. Uh, obviously, uh, a, a, a momentum boost to the Young Bucks going into the pay-per-view. Uh, we got a commercial break, and Okada yanked Garcia by his uh, boot to the floor. This is uh, Pac, Daniel Garcia, and Penta, six-man tag team match. Uh, everybody fought. At ringside, they went to a picture-in-picture. Back from break, Matt was uh, all of a sudden on the microphone in the ring wrestling. He was calling the match while wrestling at the same time. He tagged in. He kept calling the match. He assured the ref he wasn't going to take Garcia with the microphone. He asked Garcia to show him something and asked why he even hired him. Garcia then showed him something as he suplexed him. And Matt uh, is still cutting a promo, and he's streaming into the microphone. He lost the grip of the microphone when Garcia suplexed him down. Garcia then tagged in Pac, who went on the attack on Matthew. Pac hit both Nick and Matt with a drop kick off the top rope. He followed with a moonsault onto both at ringside. He turned to Okada, and Matt hit Pac from behind. Then Matt tagged in Okada. Taz uh, mentions that Pac has a bad temper. Of course he does. He's a bastard. Okada gave Pac a neck breaker for a two count. Penta interrupted the count. Pac tagged in Penta, who landed a top row body press on Okada. He then landed his Made in Japan for a two count. So Pac is now coming back. Pac kicked Okada to the mat and then climbed to the top rope. Matt knocked him off the top rope as he was attempting the black arrow. And my God, did they fucking knock him off the top rope. This guy landed right on his head, man. I'm like, holy shit. That was a nasty fall for Pac. Do you see that? Yeah. Yeah. I did. He he cleared. He cleared, but he still hit his head. So yeah. he cleared meaning he didn't like he didn't bend his neck. But my God, man. It seems like we we we're about to lose him again. I know. For all we know, for all we know, he's got a concussion. Who the fuck knows? Oh. So 
Uh, he got knocked off the top rope, and Okada caught Garcia with a drop kick. Garcia scored a two count with a jackknife cover. Okada came back with a tombstone on Garcia. Penta ran in. He got a tombstone for his troubles as well from Okada. The Bucks then hit stereo super kicks on Garcia as Okada held him, and then Okada hits the Rainmaker. One, two, three, and the Bucks, along with Kazuchika Okada, get the victory here before Dynasty on Sunday. After the match, the Bucks gave Garcia the EVB trigger. They slid a ladder into the ring. They sandwiched Garcia in the ladder. Matt climbed to the top rope, and Pac made the save with his favorite weapon, which is a hammer. So he chased everybody off with his hammer. Now, Thor. So I know AEW used the footage last week to tell the story of why they're in a match with FTR for the tag team titles. Now, you can sit there and listen to whatever bullshit they want to spew you. The reason why they're in a match for the tag team titles is because both of them ended up in the same tournament on opposite sides of the bracket, and now they find themselves in the final of this tournament because Sting and Darby Allen are no longer the champions because of Sting's retirement, not because of what happened at All In. So they're using this to facilitate some sort of heat for this dead match. Jesse and I were actually in attendance at All In. I felt no heat, no emotion towards the match there, which was FTR Young Bucks 3. I don't know what you felt about it, Jesse. I mean, the only match that I really cared for as far as, you know, the Young Bucks and FTR was maybe the first one and maybe the second one. But as soon as we got to that third one, I I didn't give a shit. And you've been saying it's like the only reason FTR joined AEW was to feed with the Young Bucks anyway. That was it. That's their job. Uh, They'll have some matches in between their feuds, but... They are literally here to feud with the Young Bucks and the Young Bucks only. You know, there'll be heels and feud with them, then there'll be faces and feud with them, they'll flip-flop, but that is their job. So they have to incorporate it in a different way somehow every time. So I think this is the first um, heel babyface uh, flip dynamic match, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't know what it is as far as the dynamic. I don't really give a shit. Now they add a ladder match stipulation on top of it to add even more manufactured heat to Just this thing. Cause. Just because. Just <laughs> because. Uh, you know, this, you know, a lot of people don't see this. You know, I'm not some fucking dummy who watches this shit. First, you do the all in footage to manufacture heat. It falls on, it falls flat on its face. It bombs. There's no heat there because there's no reason why you're using that to sell a fucking match nine months later when the footage realistically should have been shown two weeks after that instance happened. And yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, I mentioned this on TNT last night, literally a week after that, the story is supposedly the, the Young Bucks lost because they were so just not there mentally because of what CM Punk, a friend of FTR, did to open all in, right? They were so lost about what happened there. Meanwhile, they go into All Out, and they team with FTR against the Bullet Club. So you want me to believe that you were mentally not there, and CM Punk cost you the match against FTR at All In, but then you want to team with FTR a week later at All Out? Now you want me to believe this story? Come on, guys. Really now? No, I just would have, I just looked. I'd look. If he won, if he was hell bent on releasing it, just do it. I just walk out and say I'm doing it because I think this guy's being an asshole. I mean, because the sell job that they gave us, I'm I'm not buying it. No. And it, no, didn't, it didn't make it. It didn't make any sense to me. Um, I have been off social media, but I see all I see a bunch of people like complaining about the video. Be, dude, I I I do not get the pro wrestling fan base, man. They act like this guy. They act like Vince just came out and told the world their wrestling wasn't real. It was just the same fucking reactions. I'm horrified by this. You're horrified by the video being released, but you're not horrified by the contents of the actual video. You're just horrified that it was released. That that seems very fucking odd to me. But nonetheless, it's not the end of the world that he released it. He didn't break any ground releasing it. He didn't show us anything we didn't know. There was no audio. It was boring. It was not a big fucking deal. I don't, I mean, did he need to release it? No, he didn't solve anything. I, mean, I know. I wish CM Punk. I can't put CM Punk in the title. I know. 
What do you want me to do? Was the footage but, worth it? No, she says no. You know, it, it achieved nothing. No. But, I mean, at the same time, people, dude, people act like TK just pulled back the goddamn curtain, man. He act like he just committed the Montreal screw job all by himself. Oh, my life was threatened, pal. I mean, well... I didn't Not. see. I didn't see any life-threatening uh, movements there. We also didn't see the whole damn clip. And, and, and people, you fired the top guy for this, so everybody forgot all the shit that happened before that. They forgot brawl out. They forgot the shit with Hank. They forgot it all. They just saw that clip and said, "Oh, you fired him because of this." Yeah, bro. Nothing else happened before that clip. It was just that was it. Right there. Well, I mean, we don't really know what happened at brawl out. We don't fucking know a lot of the stuff that. You saw a 24 second clip and people act like nothing else happened. Punk seemed pretty angry. It seemed like to me he could have walked off that camera view and probably did say something or lunge at TK. We don't fucking know. I don't understand people's react. I don't understand how people take something, apply the entire story to that 24 second still shot and think they know the whole goddamn story. Listen, the, the whole reason for this, the ladder match, the clip that they showed last week, Jack Perry will be at the pay per view on Sunday. He will be. He will be. He will be helping the Young Bucks beat FTR on Sunday. Yep, that's what's going to happen. And, and you know, everybody's all Jack Perry's a star. Young Bucks interview with Sports Illustrated. Jack Perry's a star. He just needed this to show everybody how big of a star he is. Really? That's what the Bucks said. Yeah, that's, that's their job to put him over. I know. Well, that's it's the SoCal uh, connection there. Oh, that's a that's a bit of a stretch. Is but Jack Perry gonna make a difference for AEW television? No. Is Mercedes gonna make a difference? No. So fire everybody who's not making a difference. But if you are using this to to facilitate and try to convince me that Jack Perry is gonna be some fucking difference maker, come on, man, really? I like the good for Jack Perry, back. I guess, because how long was he gonna be fucking Jungle Boy? I guess, I'd rather see him like this now. Might as well play into it now. But I mean, holy shit. Yeah. I like that they're bringing them back with some kind of interest and some kind of story behind them, rather than just bring them back, put them in a jobber match, and see if he gets over. Yeah. Do, do something. Do something. They're going to play off this bullshit. Might as well. It's there. People know about it. Don't pretend it don't exist. Do something with it. Well, they're going to hate them for it. That's, that's the plan. That's yes, the but plan. it would have been, it would have been, it would have made a little bit more sense for Jack Perry to use the clip to his advantage instead of the Young Bucks using it to build fucking manufactured fake heat for a fucking match against FTR. That's that's the way they should have did it. Yeah, I don't even think I would have minded if that was the case. It's all his problem, not the Young Bucks. Yeah, like I said, that video was only released by TK because he was pissed off at Punk, and the timing of it—it it wasn't. Yes. He wasn't yes. ready to bring Jack Perry back. Yes, and he wanted to release it soon after he heard what Punk did in the interview. It was a fucking. It was an immature pissing contest between two billion-dollar companies. Yeah, it was so fucking embarrassing as a whole, and people were like Jack Perry is not going to make a difference. What difference do you expect, Sasha? Uh, Sasha Mercedes wasn't a big difference. Uh, Will Ospreay wasn't a big deal. So, uh, the goalpost moves so goddamn much. Who's to say that bringing Jack Pierce, well, you're not going to make a difference, Jack, so get the fuck out. You can say that for 95% of the people in that roster. They're not going to make a difference. So you got to do something with the guy. This is the best thing to use him for. See where it goes. We'll see. He will be at the pay-per-view on Sunday. So that's my prediction there. He will help the Young Bucks win the Tag Team Championships. Uh, like I said, I wish they would have went about this a little bit different. I, I genuinely don't care about anything that they're doing here. And then FTR cuts that promo. It was so hollow last week. It's like, come on, man. I didn't get that. The the, the video trying to, them trying to make the video about this feud. Yes, it's then, ridiculous. Yeah, that made no sense. No. FTR trying to come out. And pretend that they were all heated about it and everything else. That that seemed just manufactured. It it didn't it didn't feel right. It didn't look right. I mean, nobody won with that one. I mean, I, I don't I don't get it at all. I I don't I don't get how Punk has taken it upon himself to try to tear down a company where he has plenty of friends working. He has he, he claims to have friends and he wants to do his best for wrestling, but he does everything he can. I want to say this here. I said it on my channel. I want to say it on this bigger on this bigger platform. I don't think 
that you people understand. WWE has a vested interest in wanting AEW to fail. Yes. Money. They get to treat the talents any way they want to, like they used to. They get to pay them the way that they want to because there's no other place for them to go if AEW does not exist. I don't think most of you people realize that. You just want to sit there and be like, hey, look, you know, WWE won. Bro, if AEW folds and goes away, your favorite wrestler continues to get treated like shit again. But you don't care about that part, do you? Let AEW do what they want. Let Tony run his company the way he want. Let him run it like shit. Let him do whatever they fucking want. As long as they stay in business, your favorite wrestler in WWE makes more money. I don't know how nobody sees that. I don't know how no one sees that. I, I don't get it. You, 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 are, you, are, you are taking up a fight for a billion dollar company who is trying to put a monopoly back in the industry the way they like it. Bro, that just tells me you don't care about these people as individuals because when contract time is up and it's time to renegotiate and there is no AEW to go to, they will be, they will be paid like crap. They'll be treated like crap. And there's nowhere for them to go. They're not going to go to Japan. There's nowhere for them to go. But when AEW here, they have a bargaining chip. Randy Orton, when it was contract time, started taking bullshit pictures, making insinuations that he was going to go to AEW if he didn't get the money. Smart man. Do they want fucking Randy Orton showing up on AEW television? Fuck no. They'll pay him whatever he wants. Same thing with Adam Coltman. Adam Coltman wanted to join AEW four years ago. Yep. Finn said, you ain't, you ain't returning after nine years over there. You're coming right back here. What the fuck do you want? Uh, Three billion a year. Good. Goodbye. Yep. Uh, There's I mean, your Royal Rumble. Yeah, go win the Royal Rumble. They hate. <laughs> WWE has a reason to want AEW to go away. So outside of them, I don't know why anybody else would. I don't know. Listen, uh, I'm not invested in this. I think they need to move on from it. You know, I've called out their problems. Uh, I think it's cheap. I think it's lame. I think it lacks creativity. Meanwhile, they think it's building interest. It's building intrigue. It's building story. There's no fucking story here. The fuck are you talking about? The story is with Punk. The story is with somebody that's not there. The story was to get this match and this feud out of the way to build towards something with all six yeah. of these guys. You didn't do it. You failed. Clone Force says WWE doesn't treat talent like shit anymore. Even Paul Heyman and others said about Triple H. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? Triple H, as nice of a guy he is, he has stockholders and board members to answer to. So if he can't pay someone four or five million dollars like he wants to, and he can't get the approval for it, they're just not going to pay it. But if that talent has the ability to say, well, Tony Khan will pay it to me, then the board members will fork it over. But let those board members try to hear that you want to pay someone that much money and they have no competition to go to. They're going to tell them the fucking no, you have to lowball them. Triple H is the chief content officer. He is not the chief financial officer. AEW existing means that, to that, that means that Tony Khan can pay them. WWE has to match it or they're going to lose top talent. That's why they're treated better, not because Triple H is a nice guy. He doesn't pay the bills, bro. He produces the content. Hey, which is why I uh, I said that, uh, that Triple H is lo Triple H loses out on another free agent. Her, like what? What? He is, he's not a part of that praise. I'm sure he's a part of the process, but he's not. What, what, what do you think he does? He he comes up with the contract. He fucking. Drafts the con. There you go, Will. What do you want, man? Uh, let's talk yep. some money. I, no, who's talking money there? Nick Khan's talking money. Ari yep. Emanuel's talking money. Who the fuck do you think signs the paychecks over there? Triple H? Nope. He, he can spend whatever he wants, man. But if he get but if, if if the wrestler has a bargaining chip in AEW, they will make more money. I promise you, bro. Let the contract expire of, of any top star in WWE. And there's no AEW in existence. They're not getting that same paycheck. No. They are not getting that same paycheck. No. No, Becky Lynch is a free agent. Seth Rollins is a free agent coming up. Drew McIntyre is a free agent, supposedly in five weeks. What if Tony Khan offers Drew McIntyre 1.5 million a year, 2 million a year? 
What do you think WWE's got to do? Oh, we got a match, $2 million a year. What, I mean, obviously, McIntyre can stay with WWE and take less money and better creative, but it's all about cash or creative. These, these men and women want to be paid. So if McIntyre's yeah. offered $2 million by TK, Triple H, WWE, Nick Khan got to match that. Do they go to 2.3, 2.4, 2.5? Do they lowball them and give them some incentives with merchandise? Maybe we'll go 1.5, 1. 1. and then we get merchandise incentives on top of that. McIntyre says fucking no, and then Tony Khan wins out on a $2.5 million Drew McIntyre. Bro, Drew McIntyre is not re-signed yet because AEW exists. Yes. That is the reason why. Drew McIntyre can, 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 draw, he can write his own blank check, and they have to pay it, or they're going to watch Drew walk out, and they don't want Drew to walk. If Becky Lynch is a free agent and Tony Khan offers Becky Lynch $6 million a year, where the fuck do you think she's going? She's going right to AEW. We got to pay that woman, bro. You think WWE's going to fucking sign Becky Lynch for a $6 million a year contract? Probably not. Nope. Where do you think Where do you think a young, talented Bianca Belair is going to stand when her contract is up? You think Tony Khan wouldn't jump at the opportunity to snatch Bianca Belair? Mm -hmm. You got to pay her. They don't have to pay them these top dollars if AEW does not exist, then people just sit back and look at the bullshit and like, oh, no, he's just, he's, he's, he's just AEW said, no, that's not true. It's true. You don't have to fucking like it, but it's true. WWE will not pay their top talent anywhere near what they're making right now if they had nowhere else to go. That's, why, so, yeah. that's how they lost Cody Rhodes originally. They let him go. Cody said, I'm worth more. And then they said, no, you're not. You can go. Do you think right. that they would have let him go if there was another company out there like this? They let him go. And they started AEW. It's WWE's fault AEW exists because they let Cody Rhodes go and he started this shit that he started. Pay these people and you won't have to deal with shit like that no more. It's a very interesting way to look at it, but... Yes, AEW, the, the, whole point, the whole point of this discussion is AEW is very important to what uh, the, the pro wrestling industry needs. Yes. Even though they got their problems, and they're not perfect, and I'm going to criticize them every chance I get because I want yeah. them to succeed, they, we need AEW. The talent needs AEW. Competition Ooh, is good. Everyone wins. Yes. Everyone wins. Same for AEW, man. WWE goes away. AEW is going to start. Good. These, these people are about money. Billionaires are about making more billions. That means paying the, the talent less money. You can't do that if you get a Tony Khan walking around with a blank checkbook. Moving on. Chris Jericho. He made his entrance. Taz moderating this sit down or uh, this uh, little round table here with Jericho yeah. and Hook. So the announcers talked about how Jericho believes Hook needs to sit under Jericho's learning tree. He needs to breathe the rarefied air of Chris Jericho. So fans are heckling Jericho, and Jericho told the fans, he said he is the reason he pulled him off the ring apron last week, and the reason is that he felt Hook wasn't listening to him as much as he should. Keep that in mind. I'm doing this all for you. And some people say he's the greatest of all time. I am the learning tree, which I'm assuming he has trademarked already. He said those who haven't listened to him have gotten to the next level. He listed a lot of names, including MJF. He listed uh, basically everybody's worked with. Osprey was one of them as well. He says they've all become better performers and better people. He says he wants them to get to the top of Wizard Mountain together so we can breathe the rarefied air of Chris Jericho. Also probably trademarked. He asked Hook if he could put the animosity aside and sit under the brilliant branches of this Jericho learning tree. Hook, who was leaning in the corner, he was snacking on a, uh, a bag of chips. No, he says. Jericho asks what that means. Hook said, I don't need your help. Jericho said, dude, don't be stupid. Then Taz is getting involved. Well, yo, yo, get st relax. Jericho right. told Taz to stop. He says he's doing what Taz should have done 30 years ago and give that kid some proper guidance. Oh. So Excalibur said Hook isn't even 30 years old. Taz <laughs> told Jericho to calm down. Jericho sternly told Taz to stop. Jericho said people have been telling him how great he is and he's not ready. And he's not as good as he thinks he is. Taz again got in Jericho's face, and this time Jericho shoved him into the ropes. Taz went down, and the fans oohed and odd. 
So fans then start chanting, you fucked up at Jericho. Hook shoved Jericho into the corner by his uh, his collar. He says he'll show him how good he is anytime, any place, anywhere. And he told him to get out of his ring. Jericho said he didn't really mean it. Hook yelled at him to get out. Jericho did exactly that. And he got out of the ring and he didn't do anything else. So he politely left the ring. Uh, I thought this was actually very good. Uh, I think Jericho kind of, you know what it is? Maybe I'm, maybe it's just me, but I got 2008 Chris Jericho vibes here just a little bit uh, with what he was doing here with Hook. Uh, Jericho's grown out his goatee. He looks the heel now. Um, I know a lot of people want, including us, Jericho to go away for a little bit because absence makes the heart grow fonder. But how do you feel about this, Jesse? I mean, I feel like this was the most effective segment that Jericho and Hook had. But what does it really mean and where does it really go? Who does it really benefit? I don't really see how anybody could truly care, even though this was a good segment. And Taz was involved, which I thought added a nice element. I still don't care. And I'm sure you don't care either. I, I feel like this... Um, well, you, uh, no, let's hold off on that, that um, bomb. Um, I, I feel like this... We'll get to it right after this point because I don't want it to I don't want it to lead off track. Yeah. Um I, I feel like this this whole feud has gone the way that we originally hoped it would not when it started. Remember that? Yes. We were saying we we hope it just doesn't wind up just being like a, a match between Hook and Jericho. Well, it's exactly what we got. You know, and it's I mean it's and it 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 does not interest me. It was more interesting when I thought they were gonna be more of a mentor student type ordeal with a story of that nature and this all this all unraveled fairly quickly you know i mean they went from you know being a, a mentor student to being a tag team to being rivals all within a month because everybody knows it sucks and they yeah. changed course <laughs> i think it's not, it's not it's not it's not interesting there's no there's no emotion there who cares jericho and another tag team great hook yeah. Who's not really a promo guy learning under Jericho? What's the story? Where is it going? How does it benefit anybody? Yeah. This is all benefiting Jericho. That's all this is doing. Yeah, Jericho is it, becoming a heel again. This is benefiting Jericho. Do we want to see Jericho in a major heel role again? Do we want to see Jericho prominently featured on television? I think everybody's going to say no. No, not necessarily, man. Not, not really. Is this one of those stories that people are uh, saying we're not getting uh, a hold of? I mean, yeah, you, yeah, it's you're a not story. following it, the story. It's a, we're following. We're not following the story, but the story isn't good. Following the story, it just unfolded like a day ago. You know, they, 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 they this escalated quickly. Do you know where the you, you know where this would go? You know where this should go, and it's not because he's retired. This th this looks like feels like it's leading towards a Jericho versus Taz match. Honestly. Yeah. Yes, they made it clear that Taz is decrepit and can't yes. get off his knee. Bad knees. <laughs> Nobody cares here. And, and Hook, the rumor is Hook is going to test the free agent market. And Taz, if I'm a betting man, is probably pushing him to test the free agent market because he knows that his ceiling has already been hit in AEW and they have nothing for him. So you're better off going to the developmental system in WWE where they'll give you a character, they'll fucking grow uh, you to where you need to be, and you'll grow with others around you at the rate that you need. That's what I feel. I don't know what Taz might stand on this. Maybe he wants his son closer than to help keep an eye on his progress and stuff. That's all. Maybe that's he, a possibility, but you know, I don't know. I, I can don't get me wrong. I can see Hook definitely um, um, doing better in NXT, but again, Taz look. Taz knows people, bro. He might know people over there who might say. Don't do it. You know, he might have a, he, he might know, not even a might. Taz knows what, what will be best for Hook to go, stay here or to go there. And whatever that, whatever that feeling is that Taz has, that's what he'll suggest to Hook. Yeah. But I, I personally, I think Hook would probably find more benefit to going to NXT. Like I said, I feel like, you know, with Hook and the way Tony Khan is building this company at the top and, you know, building down from the top to the middle to the, to the bottom. I don't know where Hook fits in. Hook is still so young. Hook is still, you know, slightly green. You know, I don't know if he's fully fleshed out. Where, where does Hook fit into this new direction, this new AEW? I don't know if he necessarily fits anywhere. And I feel like he's just going to be 
spinning those wheels over and over and over again. They'll put them on TV in something that's not important. They'll try something with them here. They'll put them in a tag team. But what does it really matter? You know, he's great. He's got TV exposure. Great. He's in front of a national audience. Great. He knows how to work live television. He'll go to WWE. He'll get all that, learn even better there, and work with people who are his age, at his skill level, and he'll move up at the rate in which he needs to with people that are at the same level as him. And when he gets to that level, he'll be where he needs to be instead of being in AEW and they're fucking... It seems like the whole company is just flying by someone like Hook. Meanwhile, they should have built the company around someone that young. The the Ospreys, the Mercedes, the Okadas, that's where they're going. The Swerves. The the Hook situation is someone like Hook. I mean, the company's flying by Hook. This is why I say I feel like Hook is probably better off in NXT because he'll be around others that are at the same level as him. I don't think he fits AEW anymore, and I don't think they have any use for him anymore, honestly. And I mean that is no disrespect. The Taz or Hook, I I just genuinely feel that way as far as what we've seen of his growth. I feel like it'll be better off him in NXT. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. I, I I think he would progress a little bit better in NXT. To be honest with you, um, there's only so there's only so, his the pace at which he can grow on TV every week is so much slower. Now, again, we don't know what kind of work they're putting in with Hook um, behind the scenes. You know, Nightmare Factory or whatever the fuck they're doing out there when they when they're um, training people off camera. You know what I'm saying? But it still feels like that he would he would have a better shot at growing in NXT right now. Yeah, I'd like to see it. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I don't know when that is. It was a recent report. We'll keep an eye on it. But uh, Jericho and Hook, I feel like uh, this uh, has already shit the bed. Honestly, Renee, David M. Oh, David M. Yes, can't forget David M. <laughs> David M. with another 99-99 Super Chat. Disagree. If AEW doesn't change, then WWE will call these wrestlers bluffs, and rightfully so. AEW might have better salaries, but look at the sponsor and merch deals. WWE is untouchable at that. That kind of exposure keeps wrestlers. Let Drew and Becky go and find out. That's the tool that they use to try to keep talent from leaving. They'll promise them this and they'll promise them that. Promise them back in deals, but then not give. That is how they treated them beforehand. With AEW here, all your favorite stars are making more money, bro. Go ask them all. They're all they are all making more money just by the mere existence of AEW. Yeah, and they are not gonna let everyone go and try to find out. AEW can't sign everyone, no. But that's why we're talking about their top stars. All right, a Becky Lynch. I'm sorry, but that is someone that has accomplished everything there is to accomplish in WWE. And if a shiny new AEW wants to dangle, you know, free four million dollars at her and WWE won't do it, why not? Go hang out with Mercedes for a little while and do I mean, why not? You know, she might have her own reasons to want to stay, but the whole point is when you have your top stars whose contracts are up, you are not at liberty to say, This is what we want to offer you, take it or leave it. You have to be competitive now. At the end of the day, I, I understand what you're saying, but at the end of the day, they have to stay competitive with their pay because of the existence of AEW. That w- that's a fact that will never change. Yep. I mean, again, I mean, it's a discussion that we could have a whole fucking show on, but uh, David, I appreciate you, and thank you for being here for the two big bombs tonight. Thank you very much, brother. We are moving on to Swerve. Renee interviewed Swerve, and this was about his title match against Joe at Dynasty in the main event. She asked for his response to Joe calling him a choke artist. Swerve says he's not wrong. He says he's been stumbling his whole career, but he stumbled into success. He said Joe can call him a punching bag, but on Sunday he'll be calling him world champion. Renee asked him what makes him so confident. Swerve says he has to answer that to Samoa Joe in person. He took off the jacket and his microphone that he was wearing. He leaned into the camera and he said he'll tell Joel to his face tonight in the ring. That's pretty basically it. I mean, are we uh, are we feeling any different about Swerve winning the championship? I think he I think he does it on Sunday. Yeah, they need to hurry up and do this on Sunday. Yeah. Um, the 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 window is slipping. Yes. Okay, so gotta pull the trigger right now. 
Uh, Mariah May, she went one-on-one with Deanna Perrazzo here. Women's match. Uh, we got not much happening here as far as these two. It went about seven minutes. Mariah May, I will say one thing about Mariah May. Man, she's very good. She is. Uh, she's very good in the ring. Like what she's bringing to the table. But uh, Deanna Perrazzo, I mean, no heat for Deanna, man. How you feel about Deanna coming to AEW? Even nothing, huh? And she's in a lull right now. Yeah, uh, I think they I think pushed her to a title match a little too soon. Yeah, and now they got to reposition her. Um, this is why I, that's why I don't I don't like someone coming in and, and getting straight to the top because the story of how you get to the top can be more interesting than you just getting there and then failing. All right. Well, so- Hooligram says, Mariah, may I please? Yes, wearing that old school Tony Storm outfit. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You guys are. You guys have. Yo, who was this, who was this Joshi that showed up last week and started making out with her, man? I have no idea. I want to see more of her on television. I want, well, I mean, that's. <laughs> you have different reasons why you want to see more. Talk oh, about man. a talk about a perfect spot for a recap video. Oh man, who what was her name, Chad? Oh my goodness, man. Can we get her back on television wearing the same outfit she was wearing last week, man? Holy shit. What do we what, what do we hire Bischoff? We got hot lesbian action going on here now. I tell you, man, that show last week was so I don't know what the fuck Tony Khan was on, man. He might have been tripping on some fucking acid last week. I don't know what the fuck was going on. Looks like some NDAs are floating around. Mira Shirakawa. Yeah, get get her. Mina Shirakawa. Get her back on TV. Oh, my God, bro. What is going on? That just came out of nowhere. You know, everybody's like, oh, my God. EO is is just unbelievable. Oh, oh my God. Mina Shirakawa. Let's get her on TV. I I can't cheat on EO. (laughs) I can't. Oh, man. EO is 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 my yeah, Asian she, EO, yeah. EO is Bay, yes. Oh my god, man. Yes. Who stardom? I don't know what that is. Sorry. Uh, uh Deanna Perrazzo. Uh, this, this was okay. I mean, Deanna's got no heat. Uh, we go to a commercial break. May was in control. Try to corner head scissor here was blocked. Bar- uh, Perrazzo sent her crashing to the outside. And we got a commercial break. Back from the break. Perrazzo was still in control. May fought back. Forearm exchange between the two ladies. May hit a big forearm. Tried to charge again, but this time Perrazzo hitting over a throw into a submission. May got the ropes. Perrazzo connected on a big pump kick for a near fall. May floated over a powerbomb attempt, sent Perrazzo into the corner, and then she delivered sweet cheek music. It's not as sweet as Tony's, but it's There is good. no cheek. <laughs> there there is. There is. That's don't, why I don't, don't understand. Disrespect, bro, okay? Look, man, there is. You know she wasn't feeling them Tony shorts the way that Tony was, man. Well, I mean, I mean that's just, I mean that's not that's not a fair comparison, man. Come on, that's, I'm just saying. Come on now. Anyway, uh, she did the sweet cheek music, spinning DDT. May got a two. She wanted May Day, which is her finish, but Perazzo counted into a roll up for the flash pin. One, two, three. After the match, Tony Storm immediately hit the ring, and she attacked Perazzo. Why aren't you black and white? Oh, did she come out? <laughs> I missed it. She came out. Shit. Go back. Read it again. Wait, wait, wait. Tony Storm immediately hit the ring and attacked Perrazzo and Thunder Rosa sprinted out. Flooring Luther before clearing Storm. Perrazzo got into Rosa's face saying she didn't need her help. But when May was there, she pulled Perrazzo. She was on the floor was May. She pulled Perrazzo out to the floor. Storm tried for a Storm Zero, but Rosa escaped. Trapped Storm in a camel clutch and then smeared lipstick all over Tony Storm's face. So, so that is uh, that is that. So disrespectful. Man. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out where the story is between Thunder Rosa and uh, Tony Storm. The story is it's a, t- Rosa, it's a title match on Sunday. Thunder Rosa never lost her title. That's that's the story. Okay, that's great. Great. Where, where's the guy that said that we're not reading in the story? We got this one. Thunder Rosa never lost her title. Story. Is she going to win that title back? No, she's not. No, she's not. Tony's no. not losing shit. Okay. No. <laughs> so uh, this was fine. I mean, uh, I expect a little bit more in-depth story, but uh, what are we going to do? I mean, hopefully they get the deli- Listen, Thunder Rose and Tony Storm, they can deliver a banger. Honestly, we'll see what happens. I'm not really expecting much of it, but the women's division right now, not really uh, as hot as I expect it to be. 
And uh, I guess we're all just waiting for Jamie Hader to get back. That's the money. That's the money feud there. That 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 is. Look, man, I'm 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 trying my best to stick to my guns that the AEW women's division is about to have a completely scorching hot summer. Maybe we but get Jamie Hader back on Sunday. Yes, we 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 gonna need Jamie back. We got to get Britt back. We got to come up with some kind of new interesting story around them, not just Britt and Jamie are friends. I mean, we've got to come up with something. Here's the thing. All you need is story because you have all the talent in the damn world. You have the best women's division out there. You have to give them something to work with. You can't just throw them out there for 30 second matches and then say, well, you guys aren't producing anything for me. You got to give them something to sink their teeth into, bro, and they'll deliver it. We'll see what happens. Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm on Sunday for the AW Women's Championship. I'm expecting Jamie Hitter possibly on Sunday. We'll see. Renee Pocket was backstage with Switchblade Jay White, who is, uh, I mean, the creator for Jay White. I mean, a little questionable there, TK. What are we doing here, man? And the guns. Baby get him steps. away from the get him away from the scissors. Yeah. Uh, and told her to sound more excited around the bang bang gang. White said, I mean, is that a cancelable effect there to uh to uh say uh be excited around the bang bang gang to another female? Uh, that's a, well, you, 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 it's murky waters there, man. You yeah. might wanna you might wanna ask Mox if he was okay uh, with that. I, I, I don't know. Uh um, White said that they've been having a blast the past few months, and uh they said that they'll fulfill their destiny at Dynasty. As the acclaimed and daddy ass have what they want. So it'll be the AW Trio titles versus the Ring of Honor six man titles at Dynasty. Winner takes all. And I can only hope that they finally put an end to this story and merge the fucking titles, which it sounds like they will. Nice. Yes. Get ready. I don't want to see them carrying around two titles. <laughs> <in> <laughs> we got 47 titles being carried around amongst three guys. Like, bro, burn them. Get, get new titles. Get rid of all six of those, get three new titles, and do this shit all over again. Get rid of those pink titles and put Bullet Club back on TV in a prominent way. Oh. Boom. A lot could be solved here. The acclaimed and Daddy Astro backstage said it's nice to know the Bang Bang Gang's intentions are now clear. They accept the challenge. Bowens talks about how they own a gold bat or talks about his own gold bat to choke on. Caster oh. calls him, yeah. Caster calls him uh, Twink Blade and made a tag team challenge for Collision. It's going to be the Acclaimed versus the Guns. So we got a little uh, old school rivalry renewed on Collision. So we have these two sets of trios titles about to come together. Winner takes all. This is the semi-main event of the pay-per-view, right? Uh, I don't know. I for, don't... All, for all I know, TK will put this on the fucking uh, zero hour. That's where it is. Is it? Yeah. You got to be fucking kidding me. No, they, is, they already said it. This is on the pre-show? Jay White's on the pre-show again? In a title match with unification re, uh, ramifications and a little bit of a story behind it. They just broke up with this crew. Listen, man. Uh, At some point, do we feel bad for Jay White when he made this decision? I don't know. You fail to see the story. I see the story. These guys were one big ass scissor gang, and now they're not. Now they're feuding on the pre show. Nobody is doubting the story. The story sucks. It killed Jay White's momentum. This guy was in a feud for the world title with MJF. This guy had a tremendous continental classic, and now he's in the fucking bang bang scissor gang on the fucking pre show twice in the same year. Holding cannot, Ring of Honor titles that nobody even knows exists. Mid Missouri Smart says it can't be unification. They 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 can't unify them. Why can't they unify what them? Are we talking because about? one's ROH. Why can't they unify them? Why do we need two six man tag team titles floating around on the fucking main roster? Why? Why can't they, they give me one good reason why the owner of both companies can't unify those goddamn titles? Are there any six man groups on Ring of Honor television for the need uh, so that they need six man titles on the show? I don't think so, right? Not the mod. I don't know. I don't fucking watch it. Who watches Ring of Honor? It's like a, a, a but, twenty people that watch Ring of Honor weekly. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. There is there is not enough to do 
So if you have one set of trios champions and if you want to roll them back and forth between shows, that would make more sense because maybe you're going to push the tag division on TV and then maybe roll the trios titles in the ROH for a few weeks at a time and then you can just bring them back when you need. But explain to me why they can't be rolled into one. I don't know. Where's Wardlow, someone says in the chat. Who? Where's the Undisputed Era? <laughs> the Kingdom. <laughs> Where are they? They are. Um, Warlow is done. I told you guys Warlow was done the last time he lost. He's done. Adam he's Cole done. is sitting at home with Britt Baker, wanting to go back in time to where he's working with Triple H. Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, and Roderick Strong would be the fucking biggest group on WWE's main roster right now. That's where they want to be. Adam Cole is sitting at home with absolutely perfect teeth right now. Why are we talking about his teeth? Spotless teeth. Why? What, what's wrong with his teeth? Oh, his dentist. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with his teeth. His teeth are nothing. Spotless. Yeah, nothing. Honey, I got a, I got a cavity filled right there. Uh, fix it right there. <laughs> Done. What else? Need a filling? I got an Any? ache in my tooth on the right side. We'll make an appointment for 9 o'clock tomorrow. What do you need? Come on. What do you need? Orange Cassidy. One-on-one -on -one with Shane Taylor. Oh, man, I, I can't wait to watch this match that I in. Oh, man, why are we watching uh, Dynamite, man? Shane Taylor and Shane Taylor Productions is on the show. Bro, I was kind of interested in this match when I for a second thought that Shane Taylor had a chance at winning. I thought this was a chance for him to win and, and prove to me that maybe Shane Taylor Productions is something to watch and pay attention to. Nah, nah, they fucking, he fucking lost. So, whatever. Moving on. Why is this why why is this Ring of Honor garbage on my television? Why do I have to say the same thing every fucking week? There's like seven people who watch Ring of Honor weekly, man. Seriously. It's sad when I look at fucking other creators covering Ring of Honor on a live stream, they got fucking like 50 people. Like, really? This is what you dedicate your time to? Anthony Agogo. When did he join Ring uh Shane uh Taylor Productions? Today. Did it, was it today? Today. Uh, Guess so. I didn't even know he was still employed. I knew he was. Oh, but said that you're not watching. You're not watching the other seven AW shows, man. No, we saw we saw him in London. He told me he'd be back on TV soon. There you go. He did. He, uh, he was at the Sky Bar upstairs. There you go. Orange Cassidy loses here. Oh, now he won. I'm sorry. He beat Shane Taylor. Like you said, yeah, Shane Taylor lost. Big man Shane Taylor can't even beat fucking pockets over here, man. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's, it's good to see that Hooligram does not participate in the tribalism. Hey, just put a little WWE stamp next to your name, Hooligram. I don't know. Three weeks ago he joined? Two weeks ago on Collision. Oh, yeah. That's great. He did? Oh, okay. How many people cared? Nobody. He told me back in August he was going to be back on. Anyway, Whatever. Taylor trapped Cassidy in the corner, delivered a violent overhand shot. We go to commercial break. When we come back from break, Cassidy fired up in the corner. Taylor took the referee. Numbers game caught up to him because the Shane Taylor Productions crew uh, distracted uh, Cassidy long enough for Taylor to press choke him into the middle of the ring. So Cassidy blocked the DDT, suffered uh, Stun Dog Millionaire. Cassidy hit two dives onto Agogo and Moriarty. Taylor ducked Orange Punch, uh, leveled Cassidy with a comeback lariat for two. Taylor avoided the beach break. Cassidy hit a Orange Punch. Taylor answered with a shot of his own till Cassidy threw the big home run orange punch. There you go. Some scientific action here. One, two, three, goodbye. Orange Cassidy wins. Post-match, Moriarty attacked, and Agogo hit a big-time left right to the midsection, crumbling Cassidy as he falls down like a sack of potatoes. Taylor you was know, going to lay out Cassidy when Christopher Daniels and Matt Seidel ran out. Oh, man. TK, man, I got, I got to commend you, man, for this. It's unbelievable writing. What story development here, man? Oh, man. I, I figured a go-go would go away and come back with this whole brand spanking new moveset. Nope. Oh, punched him in the gut. Got a fist. Unbelievable. Got, they were laid out by chair shots. Trent Beretta laid them out, who watched as Taylor flattened Cassidy before Moriarty applied the Border City stretch. Shane Taylor Productions then stood tall and raised their flag over a fallen Orange Cassidy. Great. Nobody gives a fuck. Highlights from last week on Battle of the Belts. Roderick Strong turns on Kyle O'Reilly is shown. 
I wonder why they're feuding over the international championship. Strong said when you step in the ring at Dynasty, he'll end O'Reilly forever. Is there a reason why he just all of a sudden hates Kyle O'Reilly? Because he won't join the crew. Is that a reason to hate some- to the stories, man. Is that the reason to hate somebody that you've known for 20 years? That's all we got, bro. Man, the level, the level of AEW creatives uh, ideas, man. I mean, all of this, I've never seen anything like this before, man. This is some engaging, intriguing stuff. What the fuck happened to the Undisputed Kingdom, huh? And Wasn't close. Roddy supposed to win this championship and we were off and running with them uh, leading the fucking company? What and happened? Who? Who? Where is Adam Cole? I don't know. He spent a lot of time on TV. Now he's gone. I'm hoping it's because he's due to come back soon. I got news on Adam Cole. Oh, all right. There we go. Let's hear it. Fightful Select is told that Adam Cole has been off the road lately as it was slowing the progression his, he was making towards recovering from his ankle injury. Uh, Cole has been out of action since September, and those we've spoken to in AEW, says Fightful, say that they don't, that they don't have a specific timetable for his return. Him appearing on AEW television isn't out of the question, but... The frequency has been reduced. I can see that. Right? He'll be back on TV when MJF comes back to TV. Uh, Which I'm assuming maybe we'll get MJF at Forbidden Door because it's on Long Island. Maybe. Hopefully. Yes, hopefully. They need him hopefully. desperately. Hopefully. Fucking international championship don't mean a fucking thing, man. Will Ospreay, main event with Claudio. I'm not going to go over this move for move because this was, I mean, I don't want to, I just want to fucking get on Destiny, honestly. <laughs> I want to get the rest of my damn weapon. Jesus Christ, this was a great match. I mean, everything was fucking great here. You, you guys know what Osprey does. Everything that he does is fantastic. Uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, rant and rave about how great he is and we'll go over move for move on Sunday when we cover the pay-per-view. But um, it was all Castagnoli during the break. Osprey was grounded throughout. Osprey battled back with a big uh, kick or enziguri handspring corkscrew kick, uh, a haluva kick connected, followed by another pip pip cheerio or a two. Uh, Castagnoli ate a few Kawada kicks. How they go again? Pip pip cheerio. Briefly applied a sharpshooter, but Castagnoli pulled out the leg and countered into one of his own, which was transitioned into a crossface. Both men then get to their feet. Castagnoli die, uh, dodged a corkscrew kick, tried a springboard uppercut. Osprey hit a thrust kick in midair into a tiger, a tiger driver for a near fall. Osprey wanted a stormbreaker, but Claudio rushed him in the corner and got an eye poke, which led to some uppercuts and then a ripcord larry got a near fall. And Castagnoli was frustrated that he couldn't put Osprey away. So Osprey eating some European uppercuts here by Claudio, and he kips up into an enziguri. Both men floated over. Osprey snapped through a Ricola bomb into a Hurricane Rana pin for two. Claudio caught Osprey's os cutter attempt in midair, and he caught a uh, flying Osprey into a burning hammer, or lo- what looked to be a burning a- a hammer of his own for a two count. God. That was a great spot. Uh, Claudio went for a big home run shot. Osprey met him with a Spanish fly. Osprey then sig- signaled for the hidden blade, but ran into a beautiful pop up uppercut. Claudio. Tried for the giant swing, but Osprey, I've never seen anybody do this before. So Claudio's got him in the giant swing, and Osprey pulled himself up into a tornado DDT while he was in the giant swing position. Yeah. Unbelievable. Tornado DDT, then he hit the leap of faith off the top rope for two, which is basically a uh, twister off the top rope, twisting senton. Uh, hit and blade, one, two, three, and Osprey gets the victory in a tremendous main event, which you, you would expect with those two guys in the main event. Osprey wins going into the Dynasty show on Sunday. Post-match, Hobbs and Takeshita with Kyle Fletcher of the Don Callis family attack Claudio, throwing him from the ring where Takeshita was going to deliver a brain buster on the ramp, but John Moxley ran out, and the numbers were against him. Moxley and Hobbs, Hobbs slugged it out. Claudio and Takeshita went at it. Moxley and Claudio held their own here in the ring, and Hobbs told Moxley next week uh, the match is on. Osprey didn't participate in the post-match attack, which Jesse and I documented earlier. Looks like they'll use this to break away Osprey from the Don Callis family. Uh, there was no Brian Danielson tonight, so Claudio and Moxley were left staring Hobbs, Takeshita, and Fletcher. And that was basically it. Good stuff. It's all right. 
all in all, I mean, it just left. I mean, it just left so much. I mean, I'm to be honest. Outside of what um what Swerve and Joe did, that was about it. Oh, wait, do we cover that? No, it's coming up next. Okay, all right. But yeah, yeah, Swer- that, that- yeah, Swerve and Nana were the, the last segment with Joe. Uh, they uh, needed that last minute prep. Because they put the CM Punk Jack Perry situation and then Osprey talking about Triple H last week uh, took precedent over Swerve. So they made it a priority to have the go home show end with the world title story. Great. Should have been last week, too. Anyway, uh, we got Swerve and Nana out there, and uh, he said he needed to address Joe face to face. So. Strickland left Joe with a fear as he ran off like a little bitch last week. As Strickland raised the AW world title in the air, Strickland is waiting for Joe to come on out to the ring to tell him to his face. Joe made his way out with security, trying to hold him back. Uh, with all their backs turned, Strickland hits a wild swerve stomp off the top rope onto all the security uh, before coming face-to-face with Joe. He poked the title that was on Joe's shoulder and told him he's going to win the championship on Sunday. Then they started brawling. Joe struck first, sent Strickland into the ring before Joe stalked Nana in the corner. This allowed Strickland to fly in with a boot and delivered the house call. Strickland took too long to follow up as Joe cut Strickland off in the corner, delivered a muscle buster. Joe stood tall over Swerve, raising the AW title in the air as the show tonight went off the air. So uh, as Pro Wrestling 101 in the handbook states, the heel champion got one over on the challenging babyface, which probably means the babyface will win the championship on Sunday. Yeah, I think Joe held on to the title longer than I anticipated. Yeah. Um, I, I really did call him a transitional champion. Nothing to do with Joe. It's just the way that they it looked like they were mapping out the main event scene going forward, and they were positioning um, um, Strickland to be the guy. Yeah, And you can't hold off forever for, to have us follow this chase. This chase needs to happen a little bit quicker than, I mean, look, this pay-per-view is fine. Anything past this, it's gone on too fucking long. So they need to go ahead and pull the trigger on Swerve. He needs to be the guy um, for the foreseeable future until Cole and MJF comes back. NXT 2.0 vibes, JD. What do you mean? I'm, I'm giving off NXT 2.0 vibes? Oh, with this layout, probably. Oh, well, that's their colors. That's their colors. The rainbow. I didn't make the colors. <laughs> I didn't even make this layout. I'm not that talented. <laughs> You don't want to blame somebody else for it. Fucking Salrex. Yeah, fucking Salrex did that, not me. Salrex does great work. Salrex is awesome. Uh, Thank you guys very much for all your support. Uh, We're going to get into the Super Chats and then get out of here because uh, I want to hop on Destiny and do some uh, onslaught grinding, if you don't mind. I need Uh, more fucking vault space, man. Yeah, me too. I got got five spots left. Uh, Anyway, guys, thank you very much. Follow me on social media, at JD from NY206. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Cameo. Thank you for all the love and support. Follow Jesse at Chi Town Smart on X. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications. We need 80, 90 more likes. 90 more likes for 1,000. If you guys can do that, I would really appreciate it. Go check out all the other content on the channel. There's plenty of it. More coming this week. I'll be live again on Friday after SmackDown. And then AEW's got Dynasty on Sunday. Jesse and I will cover the show on Sunday. I am covering... Raw and SmackDown now on my channel. There you go. Tell them. Next day. Not the same night. It'd be done the next day. Everyone had this weird assumption that I hate WWE when all I said was I didn't watch WWE. Didn't I explain why I didn't watch it? Because like, I couldn't fit it into my schedule with all of the, of the TV that they do and cover AEW and cover TNA. So I found a happy meeting. I found a happy workaround. I'm not going to cover it live that night. First and foremost, because I need to be here watching this guy. Yeah. But second of all, I I then have a little bit of leeway to not have to sit there and watch it live. I can watch it later that night if I have stuff going on with my kids at school. I can watch it early the next morning and then get the content out to you guys in that afternoon. So this way it makes it a lot more flexible to me. So um, I'll get back into the, 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 the swing of things with the daily watching of SmackDown and Raw, and I'll start covering it following day going forward there's a lot of content creators that cover raw and smackdown the following day because there's only there's only like three or four creators that are covering uh, raw the day of or the night of me solomonster awful and uh don tony so 
Yeah, you know, that's uh, it, it, it. That's a commitment, man. Th- yeah. That means you. That means you're parked in front of your fucking TV watching this show at those program times every damn Monday and Friday, with no exceptions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, it's harder for me to do. It, I mean, it's a, it's a lot easier for this guy to do as far as his schedule, but for me, it, it's kind of harder for me to do. And this way, it makes it a lot easier, so I can kind of manage it this way. Uh, Elijah, JD, what do you use for a camera? It looks amazing. I use uh, a Sony uh, camera with the Elgato 4K, uh, whatever the fuck they call it. It looks good. I'm not even streaming at 4K, man. I was streaming at 4K, and then YouTube fucked it up. So YouTube doesn't give us 4K. No. Uh, thank you, guys, man. We're getting into the Super Chats. Michael Krause with a $2 Super Chat. What's up, JD? Jesse, thanks for all the work that you do. Thank you, Michael. Jamel with the 199. I didn't know Jericho's song changed. Sounds terrible. I'm well, he's glad the song changed. He's going, yeah, I'm, I'm glad Judas is gone. Uh, Jamel also with the 499. So Tony is taking after Vince and giving us the match between the Bucks and FTR before the pay-per-view on Collision. Great. I thought about that, too. I mean... You're getting 60% of the match. Yeah. I mean, though, though I, I forgot to mention it. Uh, Okada and Pac, even though they're wrestling at the pay-per-view, they, they basically stayed away from each other in that six-man tag tonight. So they, they they are usually good at that. I don't know why they're going the Vince route here, but, I mean, the whole fucking storyline between Bucks and FTR is trash anyway. Uh, Jamel, thank you. Tony Brown with the 499. Mercedes, Mercedes, Mercedes. Looking delicious tonight. She always does. Nick with the 23 months. Just one more month till you get... The ultimate treasure, the golden microphone. Oh, you, not me, Nick. Uh, the golden microphone, just showing some love to the OTS venue. Thank you, Nick Williams. Uh, Weston, with a 28 months. Hey, JD, number one podcaster in the IWC. You blocked me on X. I apologize for my media pass take and getting upset at your AW rants. Can you unblock me? Love you. Weston, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. I will do that right now. 28-month member. I'm blocking on social media. Look at me. How fucking professional I am, huh? What's your at, Weston? That's uh, the way to do it, guys. Guys, you want to get unblocked by JD? Do what Weston just did, and don't DM me. Yeah. Yeah. What's your at, uh, Weston? I, I, you're not gonna show up here, so you got to tell me. Um. Uh, beyond the script of the four ninety nine, just wanted to say you handled last night like a pro. How many? Would have cried. YouTube was down. <clears throat> Denise, always respect you, brother. Thank you. Beyond the script. Hey, what was going on with that? It didn't. I didn't see a problem with it on my. I don't know. I wasn't even paying attention. I was just so focused and in the zone talking about what I was talking about, and everybody's like, "Oh, the chat's down." Oh, okay. I, I know. I know. Chat was complaining about. It. I saw that your was... views go down to like twenty. Oh boy. Maybe. Uh, maybe Denise had that DDoS five thousand. I don't know. There you go. At West 2504. At West 2504. There he is. Uh, what? What's his, what's his header? Fuck JD. <laughs> Why is... uh? Now you ain't showing up here, bro. West 2504? That's... I see nobody. Let's see. Maybe you messed that up. At West 25. Uh, beyond the script of the 499. Jesse, welcome back, brother. Good to see you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, there is no. Oh, oh uh, West, it's changed West it CEO 2504. No, oh, no one. Left some secret letters out. All right. Hey, y'all, man. I see you. <laughs> Chelsea Green's tweeting you. What? Chelsea Green tweeted you on April 14th? Uh, Weston, I'm blocked. <laughs> you blocked him? <laughs> Weston, I'm blocked. <laughs> you blocked JD, bro. <laughs> Unblock West CEO 2504. There you go. You may have to un- unblock me, man. He might have blocked me when I blocked him. I don't know. Ah, uh, Billy, thank you, brother. Drew, with a 20 months, partaking in a fine red wine and booze-filled truffles as I celebrate 20 months as a member in the best family in the IWC. Welcome back, Jesse. 
Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you all. Some Savion Blanc for me, Drew. Though I do like a nice glass of red wine at times. Golden Boy with a 30 months. Good to see you back, Jesse. Also, glad your son is doing well. Salute to you and respect, man. Appreciate you guys, man. Thanks for sending JDD super chats for my son's well-being. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Uh, Lewis with a one nine did I welcome back, Jesse. You were missed OTS for life. Thank you, brother. Paul Wu with a new membership. Zero clock, 10 months. Yo, Jesse, welcome back, bud. OTS for life, baby. Thank you, gentlemen. Jamel Turney with a 499. So what you guys are telling me to is blowing through these dream matches with Osprey with no stories. Well, Brian's retiring this year or semi-retiring this year, Jamel. Like Jesse said, it's a rarity, a rare occasion where when we let it just kind of go, you know? Given giving you the stories that we, that or well, not you, but giving us the stories that we would want with these Danielson matches would mean he needs to be on the road more, which is the one thing that he is trying to reduce. You know, I don't get me wrong. I would love you know all of the story that Brian would bring to a few man. The guy is incredible, but we need to accept the fact that he's winding it down. So I'll take whatever he's willing to give us right now. Uh, Eddie Hazard with a 20 and all super chat. Couldn't chat last week because I was driving aimlessly in the dark listening to JD's epic rant. But I was in Charleston for Dynamite last week and it was so awkward. I would rather have been in Indianapolis tonight. OTS for life. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, last week's rant was epic. Uh, Brian Owens with 13 months. It's great to see the best tag team in the IWC. This was a good show. But where is Christian and the patriarchy and the undisputed era? <clears throat> King Ben. I don't know, Brian. I have no fucking clue. I have no idea. I do need Christian Cage back in my team. Yeah. Uh, Michael Krause with the four months. Thank you, brother. JD and Jesse, you both work hard at what you do. Always speak facts, and some people just don't understand story versus no story. Maybe you write it in crayon. LOL. They still won't even see it, Brian, because they're blind. Or uh, Michael. They're blind. Brian Owens, thank you for 13 months. And Michael, thank you for four months. Shout out to Hooli man. Uh, Thomas, she, what is he saying? He put WWE in the front of his name. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thomas Franco <laughs> with a 99.99. Thank you, brother. The cake with the $2 Super Jack. And congrats to Ruby Soho. I hope all goes well. Yes, congrats to Ruby. Uh, Daniel Young, he, him, his with a new membership. Thank you, Daniel. I don't know why we need the pronouns in the name, but thank you. KB Brown, thank you for the 100. Tenario with a 499. JD, do you watch Pokemon? No. What am I, five? David M with a 100. Thank you, brother. Furious Nation with 30 months. What's up, JD? Jesse, I'm so happy you're back, man. Hope your son is okay, and I've been praying for him. Excited to see what's to come for TNT. Thank you, Furious Nation. Thank you. You will see in a couple of weeks. Everything is going to be good. Uh, Joseph Taylor with 2 Super Chat. Will versus Brian will steal the show at Dynasty. Yes, it will. Brian Owens with a $5 Super Chat. Where, where are they hiding a Julia Hart injury after the match on Rampage against Layla Hirsch on last week's Rampage? Julia took zero bumps tonight. Well, maybe, I mean, well, to be fair, there was no other woman on the other side. So, There's, look, there's different levels to injury, guys. Yeah. I mean, you, believe it or not, your favorite wrestler, whoever it is, it's has probably worked injured. through many of injury. You know? And is probably injured. Yeah, probably injured right now. You know, they work injured. It's the severe injuries that keep them off TV. But if it's something they can work through to get through something and then take the time when they can, that's what they would prefer to do. If they can't, then they can't. Uh, Captain Solo with 33 months. Looking forward to TNT moving forward. Good luck to Mr. Bay Dalla and all his future endeavors. OTS for life, yes. We love Drew. In two weeks, when I announce the new co-host, you'll watch the uh, the unseen footage of the post-match or the backstage brawl between Baydala and myself that led to his dismissal on TNT. And yes, I feared for my life. Jedi Joker with a $5 Super Jet. Yo, Jesse, good to see you back on Wednesday night. Glad your son is doing better. And according to Google, Ruby Soho is single. I Googled it. All right, maybe yeah, they are dating. She, she was... She was dating Jake something, but um, 
I, I, I looked it up too. She, I, I guess it's confirmed that they were dating uh, Angelo. So Jake something is a great wrestler. I think Jake something's great. He's, he's a physical specimen. Yes. You know, and he, he, he has one level 10 and unfortunately for me i think that kind of makes him a little one-dimensional because he's not great on the mic and his 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 work rate is like just aggressive tens ah oh, he's, he's like you know that supercharged muscle bound guy and there's no other level to him yeah i think if he can come up with a different you know speed different dynamic i think jake something will be great but for what he does right now at this level yeah i think he's great man uh, David M, thank you for the ninety nine ninety nine, brother. Uh, Jamel Turney with the one ninety nine. So Triple H treats wrestlers the same as Vince. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Robert Lamo with a five dollars super chat. To be honest, I'd rather have top flight win the tag team tournament to beat the Young Bucks and win the tag team championship. Well, that's not going to happen. No. They got a pay per view to sell. Top flight is not that. Irv Wallace with the three three months. Welcome back, Jesse. Great to see you, bro. JD, the champ is here. The champ is here. Y'all keep doing it big. Thank you, Irv. Twisted with a $2 Super Jet. Welcome back, Jesse. Great to have you back. Cake with a $2 Super Jet. Ring of Honor champions won't show up. What do you mean, Ring of Honor champions what? won't show up? What are you talking about? Um, the trios titles? Man? I guess. Trevor, what's up, brother? Braves are 12 and 5, man. We swept Houston. What is going on with Marcelo Zuna, man? What's going on with him? Is he is he like did he did he uh, absorb all of Acuna's powers in the offseason? Enjoy the show tonight. A ton. Osprey and Claudio were phenomenal. Neither of those two can have a bad match. We're happy to see Jesse back and glad to see his son doing a lot better. Heart emoji. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Trevor. Scariest time of my life. Easy. Scumdog with a 20. Hey, JD and Jesse, I hope you guys are having a great week. Jesse, I'm glad your son is doing better. My question is, if WWE and AEW ever had a crossover event, what would your dream match be? Uh, that's not going to happen, but uh, I'm sure it involves MJF. Um, I want to see Roman and Kenny. Yeah. Or MJF and Roman. Oh, no, I want to see MJF and Seth. That's a good one. Brian versus Gunther. Ugh. Or Osprey yeah, versus Gunther. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scumdog, thank you, brother. Uh, Hollywood you know, era. You know what I'd like to see? Who? I'm sorry. Osprey versus Nakamura. Nah. No, I, I do. But I, I, I see this version of Nakamura that we've been getting. I'm, I'm talking like NXT Sammy versus Nakamura. Nakamura versus Will Osprey. That's what I see when I, when I say that match. Hollywood, Eric, the five. Throw up the one for the bloodline of the IWC, the Tribal Chief, JD, the Taco King, Jesse. Glad to have my favorite server back. Glad LJ is doing great. Thank you, Hollywood, Eric. Thank you. Don Park with the five. I'm happy to see Jesse back and that your son is doing better. Good to see you and JD Cook as always. Thank you, Don. MGM Ballin with a 199. Anthony, a stay stay off my TV. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. Jamel with the 199. Jesse, thoughts on the Tamatonga debut on Friday? Um, I did see I did see that back. Um I there's nothing to his debut. So let's get let's get that straight. The debut was just him running in and attacking Jimmy. But so forget that part. The part I like is the civil war that they're building. Yeah. And and and, and how, how Tamatonga made it clear that he acted on orders of the tribal chief. <clears throat> Rock. I don't know. I it could. I think it's Solo. Solo is the Tribal Chief. The Rock ordered Solo to be the new Tribal Chief. Oh, okay. Maybe that's it then. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I'm. 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 I'm seeing Survivor Series. I'm seeing Tamatanga, Solo, and Jacob Fatu versus the Usos and Roman. Yeah. That is gonna slap. Man. Yep. That's gonna be fucking incredible. Jacob Fatu gonna be a legit fucking game changer, man. Wait till you guys see the Simone Werewolf. I'm telling you. Man. Um, Yeet with a 199. Willow got attack backstage. Roll the tape. Guap Rollin with a 999. In early 2023, I lost my left eye and had to deal with total blinders for four months. But I had you and Jesse to recap wrestling for me, so I always thank you guys for that. Love y'all. 
I'm sorry to hear that, Ron. That sucks, man. Hope you are well. You know what else, though? I think Triple H is getting ready to do to, to really shove that fuck you to Vince. What? He's going to get Roman over as a babyface. Probably. That 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 is the one thing Vince could not do. And I think it really fucking ate at him. That he, that's why he shoved him down our throats. He couldn't get him over as a babyface. Triple H is about to get Rowan over as a baby. But doing this, but doing the one thing that we all said for years that Rowan needs to turn heel for a while, and then he'll make this baby face run much easier to do down the road. I remember at one point I probably uttered that a thousand fucking times. You're right. And he's gonna he's getting ready to fucking do it right now. He's gonna Roman's gonna be a huge baby face. They're gonna keep him away from Cody on the complete opposite show of Cody, but he's gonna be a huge fucking baby face. Uh, Buff Llama, my guy, Buff Llama. What's going on, brother? $5 Super Chat. Just got out of surgery. Had both knees removed. Gave them to Big Show, so he'll be back in WWE on Monday. You're welcome. That guy could barely do that. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, man. I feel so bad for that. We, we, we met him at the hotel lobby when we were leaving, and my wife went to get a picture of him, and the guy just wanted to sit down. He took the picture uh, with her. He had to sit down. It just, it, it, it hurts me. To watch him walk. Like, he just looks like he's in so much fucking pain. Not good. Not good. Not good. Uh, thank you, buddy. Uh, Weston Mayer with a 499. Punk is injured, cutting promos and spots with Drew Monet. And also, Punk's first match back in WWE on TV was at the Royal Rumble. Let it play out. I guess. If you want to look at it that way, fine. Punk and Mercedes are two different entities. Cake with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Cake. Uh, Billy and Eddie are the only champions that show up. Eddie is world champion. Billy, Billy who? Billy, Billy Gunn? Uh, Will? No, Will's not a champion. Who, who, who are the ROH champion? Uh, Eddie? Uh, Eddie Kingston and Billy Starks? Billy St no, Athena's world champion, isn't oh, she? I don't know. I, just, I don't know. Don't tell me Athena lost the title. Who knows? I don't know. Guys, I don't watch any of these loser streamers, man. These 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 fucking industry plants. The only streamer I watch is Dr. D. That's it. Uh Cake, okay, thank you, brother. Juan Castle, the 199 TNT new co-host. Eric Bischoff or Conrad Thompson? No and no. No. Who I got is better than both. Uh, and Jamel Turney with a 499. I need Jay White to hurry up and get to WWE so I can see him, uh, correct, so I can see him against Seth, Balor, Cody, and Gunther. You guys want to know who the next co-host is? Join my SmackDown review this Friday. Maybe I'll drop a hint. No, there's no hints. Okay, well, I try. There's no hints. Sorry. Hooligram knows who it is. Uh, I think you, were so the, you, you two are the only ones that know, honestly. So good. You should tell Hoot, man. Hoot Media? Yeah. Uh, Hoot Media knows. Oh, but you said just me and Hoot Group. Oh, well, I mean, well, Hoot Media is uh, somewhere. <sighs> yeah, Hoot Media, I mean. I think, Hoot Media, I think Hoot Media retired. Uh, I don't think Hoot Media retired at all. But Hoot Media knows, yeah. It was Hoot Media's idea, actually. It's a pretty good idea. Yeah. Really anyway. good idea. That's look, that's gonna that's gonna slap, man. I legit popped when I saw that. I, I was like, no fucking way. record. Sh record numbers will be shattered. That's all I will tell you. Like, how? My God, dude, that's gonna be insane. No, it's not Disco Inferno. No, I'm getting out of here because you guys are <laughs> fucking pissing me off. It's Disco Inferno. Yeah, well, the fucking TNT will be dead. Oh God. Anyway, guys, yeah, thank you. And Ryback. No. Well, it's not Ryback. It's not Cronin. It's not fucking <laughs> Disco. Jim Cornette, you know. Uh, Cornette's got me blocked. I enjoy Cornette. Poor Hooligrim is stuck with that name for two weeks, he said. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting out of here. Thank you guys very much for all your support. Uh, make sure you guys follow me on social media, at JD from NY206, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Cameo. Make sure you guys go follow Jesse as well at Shy Town Smark on X. Hit that thumbs up. We got a thousand likes. Thank you guys very much.
Thank you for the super chat, love. Thank you for showing Jesse love upon his return tonight to the OTS venue. Thank you for the memberships. If there's any news, you'll see me in the sub boxes tomorrow. And then if not, Friday with something, and then we'll be live after SmackDown on Friday night. Make sure you guys also hit that subscribe button, and please turn on that bell for all notifications. Thank you guys very much. I will see you all right back here with more on Off The Script. See you guys later. Mustang needs service. I don't know what the fuck happened. I'll see you guys later.